somewhere. It's it's crazy. It's crazy. It's like I understand everybody wants to get you know the last bag tournament in. You want to just like grind it out. This is one of the final stops before Evo. Fight. Right. We got Juice Box Joints versus Evil here. Starting out with a small tech and seeing who can score the first knockdown. Yeah, looking for that face trap, the down forward two. Yeah, you see, keeping Whoa. it kind of simple, looking for that whiff punish there. No one's trying to commit to something hefty just yet, but Juice Box Joints off with the first big start, especially pushed towards the corner. Oh, got that exact kill be there. Had to be within one or two damage, otherwise they wouldn't have gotten it. Juice Box Joints gets the first point on this set. Yeah, and you see that Evil's really looking for that launch. Fitting a lot of down four twos, a lot of space traps. He's trying to get Juice Box Joints to bite on something, but it's been difficult so far. Yeah, Evil's trying to get Juice Box Joints to kind of hesitate, but he is absolutely not. And got a fantastic timing read with the right leg of the Forbidden One. Still has Tornado, mind you, but chose not to use it. Yeah, I was trying to maybe do a, a heat dash combo before the tornado, a little bit of a whiff, but with that life lead, easy cleanup, juice buck joints, first game point. Again, just small point, exactly <laughs> what you were saying earlier, Evil really wants those facing traps, but juice buck joints again with those big timing reads. Finish the string, two, one, four. Keep it going, yes. It's one of the Jin's best tools, just all the strings that start from jabs. And then use that upward two to be able to evade afterwards as well. You know, they nerfed Fangs, but somehow Jin's is just fine. Evil trying to get this big timing read of his own, and he does. He is smoking this juice box joint right here. Oh, huge damage to end off the round. Finally gets to put himself on the board, cuts the lead in half. Dangerous jabs there, and he gets another sway back kick, Sam. Yeah, I missed the combo that time. That really hurts. Yeah, that's, that's a huge damage combo starter for Paul. I mean, a lot of his combo starters are, but given that Joints has not given him a lot to work with, those things mean more, especially when someone's playing small Tekken for the most part. That was dangerous right there. 14 frame punishable. Juice Box Joints got a little bit of it, but now the Depraved Savagery, the Hell Sweep into the down two Scourge, and that Hell Burst, that Heat Burst, Remember, as of the last patch, you cannot kill with Heat Burst. That's why he didn't have the ability to kill just with the wall combo right there. He literally stopped pressing buttons thinking that he killed on the wall right there. Hesitation could be one of those things, but Juicebox Joints was able to close out that game. Yeah, I probably wanted the combo properly so that he could just kill it, but you know, sometimes uh, a little bit late, sometimes it's a low splat one way or another. Either way, we cleaned it up. Yeah, so I mentioned it before. Uh, a lot of counter hits, a lot of big counter hits actually, because, and that's kind of what you see with small Tekken is that you end up seeing the counter hits actually come because the players make a, a timing read, right? So then yeah. they, they basically do a move right when they expect you to press a button, you get counter hit by it and they go for the big damage. That's why you see safe counter hitting moves, forward four for Jin, sway back four for Paul. These things are really, really strong and uh, control the space in front of them really well. And then when they get the counter hit, you get the big damage. Yeah, and QCB for the swayback kick from Paul is actually plus unblock even, so it's even more dangerous in so many of those situations. Juicebox Joints gets this big knockdown, wave dashes up into the heat engager and makes in. Yeah, trying to go for the mix, went for the 4-4-2. Down two is the other option there, or other common option, I should say. Nice heat smash Ooh. right there, and then the Paul Phoenix, that's the Phoenix right right there. The uppercut that puts you down and the, the slam he's got the rage he has heat but unfortunately he can't use the resources in time i yeah, tried to press on a lot of plus frames there after the back two one first round goes to joints looking a little bit better though i think that the the after the first game maybe evil's got a little bit of a, a better idea of how to approach this and that's definitely a good sign for that yeah, Juice Box Joints definitely was using a lot of those small buttons, and Evil was just like, do one more, do one more of those. Gotcha. Yeah, I can see that for sure. Paul's got a lot of stuff that, like, randomly crushes. That shoulder is mm -hmm. one of them. You know, and, and you can definitely throw somebody off guard by just, you know, slipping in some of these things, especially when you're playing this kind of, like, standard teching, quote-unquote. 
I'm loving the options that I'm seeing from Evil when Juicebox joins, stops using their strings. Oh my gosh, the wake up three just continues to do wake up three, two. Oh my lord. Back to one, trying to cover that space. Oh, no, I'm gonna go for the cancel, trying to blink punish. Oh, the down jab no. whiff because Juicebox joins messed up the crouch dash. And that actually could have been really important for Evil to be able to get some of that. He died with heat again. Cannot let that happen to you a third time. Plus frames. Oh, I love the timing change on that. Took the plus frames to basically make a read when he was going to press a button. Ooh, these box joints let Evil get away with murder on that one. Tries to go in with the demon plot and Evil's playing some keep out crazy. The hell sweep in there a little bit too far for the down two. Oh, counter hit setup off that hook. It looked like evil was down there. It looked like there was no way that that kick hit him, but yet crumpled he was. Yeah, surprised he didn't go into heat there. That's kind of what you normally see off the counter at four. Oh, oh, oh. Also, you're right, kick of my own. Bro, oh, that that was. I love that move. That move just. It looks like it should do that to you. Ah, oh yeah. Ah. Yeah, Paul counter hits are, are devastating. Challenge is back. Ooh, stuffs. Another one, the sway back one plus two, but unfortunately could not get the combo. But, you know, the launcher itself is hella damaged, so we take those. Oh, you really, you, you really missed the damage there. However, unlike last game, it just ties up the health instead of giving joints a, a big lead here, so still in a better place than they used to be. The string. Ooh, negative Hard 19 punish. almost got the demon paw punish and the trade allowed the three two to connect. But unfortunately, it must have been an off axis situation. Not sure what happened, but that puts two box joints for watch high level action. Thank you for joining us, man. As we get into this next game here, we got Eddie versus Jack coming up on your screen. Except no substitutes for Temp Thumb Never Sleeps right here. Mr. Sandwich, long time Eddie Gordo main right here. NorCal Lime gonna show us what the Jack 8 can do to this character. Yeah, looking forward to this one. Eddie is actually a character I picked up in 8 as a new character when the DLC came out. Found him to be a lot, a lot of fun, so. And uh, speaking of like, you know, spins on characters, like this is one of those characters you, you can see different Eddie Ooh. players from like Junding to Sparrowgen. There's a whole bunch of different ways to play this character and see how Sandwich goes about it. Sandwich sidewalking back there was crazy. And now Lime choosing not to charge up the back two anymore, making Mr. Sandwich hold that at the wall. Remember that back two is plus five and then starts out with the back three, three, Recently nerfed says, I do not care. It only is launch punishable if it gets blocked and I'm gonna hit this. <laughs> it's only nerfed if I don't hit it, absolutely. Yeah, using the wall card property on that one, two, 44 there, keeping him in blocks and a little bit longer than maybe he expected and ties up the round count. So many big changes for Eddie Gordo. There are so many of these moves that are in the moves that, that did not exist for the entirety of Tekken, as well as a lot of moves that used to exist that just don't anymore. So it's really interesting to see Mr. Sandwich use the slippery kicks right there, which no longer is a launcher, but it's that legacy knowledge. You know he's gonna love that back one for He played this character back in Tekken Tag 2, you can tell. Yeah, and using the mix up off the back one there, went low the first time, and then now it's going mid. Definitely good use of the mix-up properties you can use back when it's such a good tool. Not only does it track really well, but it has those extension options to constantly mix up your opponent. So it's got a lot of holes in it if you do your homework. We might talk about that a little bit more live, trying to find some holes in Mr. Sandwich. In fact, trying to turn him into Swiss cheese, putting some holes in Mr. Sandwich. Floor is activated for final rounds, and somebody can get an extra combo with a spike. Lime he just spends it here, here. Barely delayed that down four or two. And then the jackhammer, 10 extra damage. Oof. Oh, taking chunks out of his live bar. He keeps trying to step, and Eddie Gordo didn't used to have a good step. No. But when this game came out, people were like, yo, his step is so good. But remember, it's Tekken. This is all about. Timing and realignment. You delay your buttons a little bit, 
Doesn't matter if your character has a good sidestep. And we're talking Jack 8 here. He's got so many good dashing lockdown buttons and that jackhammer certainly is one of them yeah so uh it's coming from seven to eight the, the main thing is that they nerfed his back dash a little bit so his back dash mm. is not as good as it was in seven or previous tekkens i should say and yeah. co and for compensation they actually gave him a slightly better sidestep it's not as good as let's say battle. elisa's xiao yu's lily's you know top of the charts but usable and uh that's definitely new for for eddie as we get into this one. first game did go to lime we start off strong with the trade wasn't able to get the follow-up though with a tie open blast the back one plus two though oh we counting on him you do not want to be in that position oh my gosh lime doesn't know that they could get running one plus two there and combo i think why else would you have done that that would have popped the hell off but it <sighs> still worked sheesh that was some damage that's going in my clips for today baby yeah, start off strong. Once again, you mentioned before Lime having really good timing. That's actually how you open him up on the wall, just slightly delaying his string and getting the wall explosion to help him out. More of these plus frames at the wall. Mr. Sandwich is getting locked down hard. Ooh, no, he thought he had the step, but got armored through. Back against the wall, though. Opportunity to make a comeback here. Yeah, Mr. Sandwich has a long way to go. Now come the full crouch strings and the down back one. That pesky iconic move from jack oh nice duck i think it's something big started for sandwich this character has really really strong oki gonna use the wall explosion going back to the center of the stage uh, missed that ender which would have put him in mandingo level one and that would have given him some much better attacks to be able to get this comeback with but he's still got a good life lead oh gets the throw he's gonna push towards the wall see what the oki is Ooh, yep, and with the wall explosion, you're gonna be able to get a combo off of this one. And he finally gets himself on the board in this second game. Yeah, that's the scary thing about that throw. When you're on the wall, it puts you face down and legs towards, so it's really hard to deal with the Oki. Yeah, wake up backwards and you're in for some trouble. Oh, Lime does not punish the counter hit launch string from handstand. Mr. Sandwich will remember that. Probably trying to get himself more of those knowledge checks to be able to feel out so that they can get to this third run. Oh my goodness, they got the heat smash, that long range stuff. Once again, Sandwich had a positive situation and backed up expecting Lime to do something. Oh, not gonna use. The heat just yet heat first for heat smash Ooh. i should say oh that's one. Oh, and it gets both the hit yep i believe that's guaranteed on counter hit in that situation very nice stuff we're in set point versus survival point right here sandwich already having the map advantage gonna use the tornado and get all this combo and we're gonna get nice oki oh, what no. the back turn stuff nice gets the punish Oh, the mix-up. Finally used the heat burst. Did it whiff? That heat burst I've seen whiff so many times for no reason. Joe Crush and Lime have been victims of it. But Mr. Sandwich is making a victim of Lime here in other ways. And we get a game three, which is my favorite thing to say because we got more games, baby. I think, it, yeah, so... So if you don't know, uh, from 104 to 105, the Heat Burst lost a lot of tracking ability. Almost, I would say all of it, probably. So um, Good. It, it, <laughs> good. I, it did I agree. not need that. It did not need it. The only reason it needed to have good tracking is because in combos, it would be nice if it always works. And I think that it always does. I don't think I've ever seen a Heat Burst whiff in the middle of a combo but it was so hard to not feel like it was an overpowered tool. And that was such an important nerf. Yeah, it, it was a, it was too easy of a way to turn back, uh, take your turn back. It was very hard to deal with. So uh, it's it's very skinny now. It feels like it, even the smallest of sidesteps can can throw it off access. So you definitely have to use it uh, in, in you know the perfect time. Oh, no. Step three for four actually dodged all of that. Is gonna get a combo towards the wall and nice combo selection. Put some face down. And the side step three plus four leaves you crouching as well if you choose. So that lime. Ha. Ha. I. Couldn't hit. No, I'm this round very.
It happened right here. Lime is on the back. <laughs> trying to do some less punishable options. Oh man. <laughs> I'm trying, trying to figure out when I when I'm supposed to be jumping in. <laughs> man, the sandwich is, is start is going real strong though. Yeah, if I get, get Okay. Hammer. A lot of grunt in here. I turned some up. Oh, counter hit. I'm gonna play as you see in Tekken 8 now because of all the things. Neither here nor there, though. Cake and milk finna put you through the layers, put some sweetness on you. And Shinobi Kun finna show you how we get it down in North Florida. Woof. All right, dude. How many times are you gonna see this matchup? Raven versus Steve. Raven, definitely an underrepresented character in this game. I can't really tell you how many people are playing this at the highest level, but obviously Shinobi can know what he's doing. Starting off strong, cake and milk already back in the, against the corner. Oh, going the third hit of the wild, man. The down to one string. Can't say I am going to agree with that one. That was a big knowledge check that Shinobi Kun passed. Yeah, it's good to throw these out early on, actually, now that you mention it, those knowledge checks. Throw them out early on in your sets and see how much the opponent knows about your character. And uh, you can definitely get some hints on your opponent if you do that. Speaking of which, I think Shinobi Kun giving Cake and Milk some hints that they are a real one with this wall standing two combo. Yes, I know you want to do a wake up low. That is why I continue to low parry and buffered it and buffered it. Dude, love the change up on the wall combo from Shinobi as well was looking to mix up the opponent even just with the little stuff like that. Oh, and that starts off strong once again in the third round. Yeah, that wall standing two counter hit is a hallmark of Shinobi Kun's plan. He is using that so well. And look at that two counter hit while standing two combos in the same round. Yeah, just needs a pixel left. It's been so hard for Cake and Milk to get started, but that's something for sure. Showing off that he knows the back turn combo as well. You usually get way more damage for back turn combo. Shinobi Kun almost got the heat smash off, but not quite, and just goes YOLO down forward two right here. I don't care. You better be framed tight if you want to get it right. Yeah, three to zero. Shinobi Kun with a lot of momentum, and that's kind of, you know, the scary part of playing against Raven, the character is so mix up heavy with just the strings and the knowledge checks. You have to know when you can approach the top of which he does have a lot like a, a lot of evasive tools as well that can throw you for a loop. So when he gets started, he gets that hit. He's always been known to have that big wall damage and then also really strong wall Loki as well. So when he gets started, it, it's tough to deal with him for sure. And you're seeing it right there. Shinobi can with the three straight. Yeah, and I think to exactly what you were saying, it's not just knowledge checks in the nooch and no knowledge checks when you're standing. It's punishment knowledge checks as well. There's a lot of, should I punish this or should I not punish this with Raven? But you know, Steve also has a couple of those as well. Cake and Milk tried to do one of those earlier and got launch punished for it. So it's really risky. I've been telling some of the players at my local, strings are a risk. When you go and you finish a string, you are committing something to your opponent's memory and it is a risk so we'll see if shinobi kun continues to run down those knowledge checks and it, he may not even need to this neutral game is on point yeah a couple of quick lows and then a big counter hit there shout out or shinobi i should say start off strong once again the trade and he does pick it up Oh, drop the ender there but th those pickups off trades so hard it throws off your timing for when you're supposed to input it it's a wall break here as well. All of this, just because Cake and Milk tried to go for the Snake Charmer earlier, and Shinobi Kun was just ready for any sort of stir turn stealing tool. And already we are on final round. Cake and Milk needs to bring it back heavy, and they do with a full crouch down 4 2 recently buffed, by the way. 
Yeah, I actually like both decisions from both players. I love the duck there. Obviously, Cake and Milk trying to stop Shinobi -kun from doing that low first options there. And Shinobi -kun testing Cake and Milk, saying, hey, are you going to block low eventually, man? Because I'm hitting you with these. Oh, there's Cake and Milk getting close to that edge. They went for the punishable option, which perhaps was a mistake because now Shinobi Kun has traded sides with them in the map advantage. <gasps> Opportunity here for Cake and Milk to finally put themselves on a board. Plus frames. Oh no, responded. <laughs> went for something hefty on the frames, and Shinobi Kun saw it coming. Takes it three straight and two to zero over Cake and Milk. Very interesting. And I I'm really looking forward to Evo. It blows me away that there's that many entrants for Tekken. Like, uh, holy shit. <laughs> this, this Tekken tournament alone is bigger than entire tournament Evos before this one. Like, that's, that's so crazy. That's so crazy. As we get into this one, we got, we got a, oh my God. Oh, we got a banger all of a sudden. Yeah, Genghis Don on the screen versus Weapon X. You already know Genghis Don has been known to devastate far and wide out here. And Weapon X using the Leroy, very good in this matchup, if you ask me, because I feel like Azusena is very string heavy, and mm -hmm. Leroy carry opportunities can really make a really hard time for a character like that. But already Weapon X is suffering with some deficiencies. Does have the resources, though. Yeah, finishes it off. Genghis Dawn takes the first round there. Yeah, I lo love that point there about the parries. Totally agree with you. Asasana is definitely a string-oriented character, and but Genghis Khan is one of the best in the states, right? So see if he can figure out how to get around this already really strong pressure on the wall here, and that's the first we'll see of it. Perfect parry, exactly what they needed right there. Weapon X, however, backing themselves into the wall. There you go. Going to use the rest of the heat smash there, trying to get take some plus frames. Get off the wall a little bit. Genghis Don is doing so well at just corralling Weapon X on the wall. He's taking a lot of risks though, but using a lot of punishable stuff on these big callouts. Yeah, another parry there. That, yeah, that speaking of big callouts, huh? Too. Yeah, dude, good stuff, good stuff. Weapon X ties it up. Oh, tried to go for the double low right there. Nothing doing. Weapon X is fighting their way out of that wall, but Genghis Don says, "Come with the so eat it." Bro, we have been we have played this whole game on half a stage. It's been all on this right side. Yeah, <laughs> right on that wall. Weapon X is trying to change that right now, though. Oh, nice! Watch the second hit. Contesto! Oh my God! Ugh. Damage! Nice tech. Both of them basically in the corner, but Genghis Don just cannot let Weapon X get away. I wonder what the first hit of this round is going to look like. <laughs> oh, he did it! Oh, he no, literally he's... did it! No! All right, we're still, we might still see the left side. Oh, the roses are nice over here. I'm happy. Oh, God. Oh, that stuff's low there. Nice low pair, even after getting hit. Nice. I like the use of the jab, but he goes for the low immediately afterwards. Genghis Don is like, I know you're feeling greedy right now, but already, yo, that was crazy how it missed. Weapon X has opportunities to bring it back. Weapon X, oh, had to take a risk there. And then the heat burst came at the right time. Sidewall tried to save him, but it wasn't enough. Genghis Don takes the first game. You know, Genghis Don, I've been talking to the members of Genghis Don's team, Two Ugly Esports, and they say, you know, he misses Katarina, he misses his characters. So you see the Fang Wei right there, right? Obviously, that yeah. was one of the first characters that he got God of Destruction with, and he likes Fang because, as we know, Fang plays some of the best Tekken that you can in any character, but he likes Azucena. Uh, but not enough to be like, ah, oh, this is my character. You know, a lot of people are in that mainless state, kind of like FDX and stuff like that, you know? Get ready for the next yeah, battle. I kind of get, I think Azu is actually like a good fit for him as in terms of a play style. It feels like that sort of, um, I think like Katarina Kazumi players who love poking and, and using mm. strings and stuff like that. I think that this is a great character for them. Um, but definitely, if you don't have the same love for the character, even if they have the same play style, it can get, it can get a bit rough. So I, I understand it for sure. I think passion for the character is extremely important. Yeah, Dang is totally. done. Yeah, already guiding. Get, uh, look, look at this. This is exactly the game plan 
Now, typically, this is pretty much the game plan for any Tekken match, right? Like, mm -hmm. get your opponent up against the wall. But Genghis Dawn is executing it so well. Yeah, I mean, you see how many running three twos he's been getting into. You know, pushing Weapon X towards the corner. It's it's really like a it's a clinic on how to take your opponent to the corner. Obviously, you got to finish it off, right? You got to get the damage to clean them up after you get them to the corner. And I will say, Weapon X has been fighting really well with his back towards the wall more often than not. Ooh, the low pimp cane messing up those shoes. You ain't gonna be shuffling anytime soon, girl. Try it again. Nice, big duck. Gets a crumple stun. Yeah, we're gonna spend heat here. Make sure we get that combo nice. Oh, no dropped it towards the end. Dang, that extra guaranteed could have been really important because Genghis Don would have still been at the wall at disadvantage. Don does have heat and 20% extra range or excuse me, damage. Weapon X though, really trying to use those small buttons. And there's the backswing below Sam. Oh, it takes plus frames too. There's the heat smash, more plus frames. Nice tech from Weapon X. Oh, there's an opportunity here for both players. And the big low parry, a read from Genghis Khan. Yo, Weapon X out here. He whipped like seven moves before Dawn was like, ah, I think I'm gonna kill you for this one. <laughs> Yeah, and it was on the read of all things. Great stuff. Again, just the small Tekken right here. They're trying to get close to that balcony. Remember that the balcony now also decreases the recoverable health that you have as well. So you definitely do not want your back to that wall. Yeah, fitting in the you would you would be remiss to know that. <laughs> Running 3-2 got nerfed. Wait, Genghis Don's playing, man, because he's been fitting it into the game plan so well. Four times. He got nerfed four times. They, you were counting. <laughs> Ooh, no thank you. Get off me. Right? Usage of the heat burst right there. In case Weapon X chose to go with the rest of that string, Genghis Don uses a little bit of that time, and I just don't see how Weapon X can bring it back here unless he goes for a hell sweep, which of course Genghis Don knew as well. Use that backswing blow for the spacing, and he's on set points. I actually love the throw that he chose because even when it broke, it wasted like four seconds. Like mm -hmm. it made the it made the comeback nearly impossible. Absolutely. It's those those ideas that, you know, these top players are very knowledgeable with my using. Oh, on the wall too, so we're gonna get a full combo off of it. Oh no, doesn't get the tornado. Dang, that move tracks really well to that side. Luckily for Don though, he was sidestep blocking and not just running the sidestep. There it is, finally a jab flow on the wall standing, or excuse me, the wall running 3-2. But Don just immediately tech rolls to get out of the wall. That's what he wanted, man, he needed that wall. Yeah, with the breakable behind him, it would have definitely been a good ticket to make a comeback. And Genghis Khan with another low parry. He's been making these reads the whole set and a couple hits on the ground. And Genghis Khan will take it 2-0 to zero over Weapon X. But this might be one of them. This might be one of them. <laughs> All right, next up we have Alex Man, the brother of Mark Man, an official Bandai Namco employee versus my homie, Debaser Farat. This is the person I played Tekken 8 with the very first time. We made a plan to meet up with each other exactly at 8 o'clock when Frosty Faustings happened in this game drop. Like, we got a lab together right now. So, uh, this is a very special match for me. Oh, dude. Love to see it. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely two characters that have, you know, already a lot of history in this game because. DJ has gone through a lot with the game, and Yoshi's kind of a hot topic right now in, in version 105. A lot of characters talk about how strong this character is in this version. For sure, 100%. And I love the changes that they gave. So they gave him the ability to go into Indian stance, which we saw back there with the baser using that move. And Alex, man, using the hell sweep to stop this kind of trickery that the baser keeps using. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna hit him out of the air, so bounding for a combo. See if he uses the floor. Ooh, almost gets all the way over there. I think they could have gotten the third hit of that combo, but already continuing to chip down. And the classic, he goes for the flashing steal after Dragonfly 4, but Alex Man uses the heat burst. And luckily, the baser has spin and has the ability to reset the timing, reset the spacing. If you have anything to say about Yoshimitsu's strength, it is that. Spin is amazingly good in this game. 
yeah, I mean, super duper good it, it, in terms of getting out of really bad situations there. And the base are actually going to be the one to use the floor here. Here we go. Yep. Good job, Alex, man. Just delaying the tech roll right there. That is some perfect execution. And the duck under that string. That right there is some legacy knowledge and muscle memory. Let's get it. Gonna go for Oki here. Oh, spending heat. Trying to look for those plus frames. Oh, float him out once again. You're right, Alex, man. Has these down. Just needs to clean up the round. He's got those conversions on point. He doesn't quite have the live lead yet. Rainbow drop attempt starts the timeout. And that is exactly what DeBaser was trying to do, but he started back flipping, and Alex, man, will not go down like that. Yeah, but now we're going down to the final stage here. Let's see how this plays a part. Yoshi loves these open stages. A lot of space to spin around. Doesn't have to worry about putting their, putting their back against the wall. Meditation there is very interesting. Look at how he's using the crouch dash to the flashing steel so much. The sidewalk there was just the perfect timing to make Alex Man think it was his turn. And it had great spacing on it as well. 18 frame heat smash. He knew exactly the time that Alex Man wanted to get moving and took that first game. Yeah, I mean, super duper good heat smash for him. Being able to lock down an opponent from that far out is one of the things <laughs> that made us really mad about playing against DJ, right? The heat smash, just being able to keep you locked down, limiting your options from so far out. Uh, and Yoshi, you know, it, it's it's definitely still workable around, like you can still work around it, but it, it is big and has a big hitbox. So it's definitely tough to do and base are using it well there. And the second hit of the heat smash goes even further than the first hit of the heat smash. Although I know some of the people out here in this chat already know that. I see my homies from the Manji clan discord, the Yoshimitsu discord. Zachary the Elder, one of my original homies, actually helped me get off the ground with almost all of my production stuff. Big, big shout outs to him. I wouldn't be where I am without him. Oh, he got the sword sweep off Axis. Very nice catch. I'm gonna use the Endu there to push towards the wall. Baser's done really well in this situation. Gets a little step around the heat burst. Oh, a flash! No! <laughs> right when you feel like you have the opportunity to do something, flash comes for you. Ooh, Alex, man, went for the please launch me daddy low, the wall standing three in that awful Oki. The Baser took advantage of that. Watch your hit in the air, so floated out and wasn't able to get a combo off of it. Step far enough. Another cross chest too, and just immediately going for the spirited away, going for the heat burst. The base are trying to get another one of those sidewalk into heat oh. smashes, and then spirited away again. One more, and that's gonna clean up the round here. Doubles their lead, and the baser puts himself on set point. Not using the second hit of the string. Great idea. He's getting so many of these throws. Nice. Great option there. Going for the tornado early on, making sure you get extended float combo. Alex Man was way too far away to punish, but that is a 13 frame punisher move. That crouch dash too that the baser keeps using. Oh, he's going in. He's gonna go for the Manji mix up. He first. Can he sidestep it? Yes, he does. And he gets the guaranteed British Bulldog throw. I wish it was the other side because then it would have been Wheels of Death. But what a sick set. So, uh, you know, learning how to do that in the game plans. And, and when you're laughing against people, one of the things you can do for your defense is learn how to backdash. It's not necessarily power crush, duck dabs, you know, jabs, sidesteps. Backdash is an option too, for sure. And, uh, you know, as we're yapping, we got the next game going. NY Toby versus Junior 20Z. Yeah, we talk about a character that doesn't need a lot of backdashing. You can't say that about Reyna. The spacing game is so important. NY Toby using another Leroy for us tonight. Hey, this is a special treat. You don't get to see this character very much. Oh, the Sabaki Heat Dash already? Oh, it still got the hit, so, you know, made the most out of it in the situation. Junior able to step off and put Toby's back against the wall here. Trying to use that power crush and the duck afterwards. What are we going to do here? Spends the heat burst. Go for Oki. 
double forward four there is very interesting on OP. Junior had heat and rage, but unfortunately, NY Toby had the reading glasses on. Yeah, great low parry clutch to start off the first one. That can definitely give you a mental advantage here. See if Junior can make the comeback. Junior's just trying to get themselves out of there using the small Tekken buttons like a jab and a sidestep and trying to use the Hell Axle, but NY Toby still has not taken a hit. And 20 seconds in, he might not ever. Yeah, he was, Junior was doing so much. He was trying to get some space to fight off the wall, and Toby would not give it to him. He kept the aggression going and took the second round. So one plus two is the chain punch here. Dang, forward one plus two, always been a god, but never not. That trade was not in favor of NY Toby, though. In the stands and goes for the huge low, putting the emphasis on the game and taking it three straight over Junior. I just have to say this right here. Me seeing Junior 20Z getting no round browned before we reach top 48 is not something I picked on my Tampa Never Sleeps 23 bingo card. No, not at all. And you know, honestly, I when I think about like Shadow and Junia, one of the things I attribute to their strengths as players is the ability to fight off the wall. It's one of the things I always say about those two guys. They're yeah, so actually. good at flipping the Get script. You the see Shadow or Junia's back against the wall, they usually, five seconds later, it's the opposite. And that time for Toby, it it happened once and then never again. And it looks like we're back to basically the same stage, the Fallen Destiny. And Junior 20Z has got to start getting backwards and kind of mixing up the timings and go delaying. But NY Toby says, no, no, I would like to stay hot on your heels. Yeah, I love how active Toby is. He's been constantly pressing buttons, little sidesteps there. Junior's really struggling to find that opening, and it's not there. Toby with the parry. I think he parried a 4-4-2 there, which is nasty. Parrying things that are 12-frame startup, you have just got some crazy timing. Oh, speaking of which, you know who got some crazy timing? The homie Junior 20Z. Dude, what a combo, too. Perfect for the wall, too. A lot of down forward ones catching him, trying to do something while he gets up. But there's an opportunity. Oh, another round and low parry. Gets to the wall. Oh, is that going to be no. Oh, he's slipping? No. Too low. Oh no, the 7th C splits kick. Junior 20Z tried to tech roll and do the fastest thing that he possibly could, but unfortunately, still it wasn't fast enough. Oh my god, who would have think that that would be still difficult to punish there? I mean, I don't blame Junior for that one. That's tough. Yeah, just the problem is that the fastest thing that you can do is also launch punishable. Yeah, it sucks, right? This is a weird situation for these set of characters. Oh, Ooh, just do it. The 4-4-2-2. NY Toby says, get out of here. I don't want my back to a wall. I would like your back to a wall. Plus frames. Oh, nice step. Takes their turn. Opportunity for Junior to put themselves on a board. And it's not going to happen this time. Toby is at set point. He's five rounds straight right now versus Junior 20Z. And I'm just going to tell you right now, Junior don't take things like that kindly, but he's got his back to a wall already, Sam. Dude, I'm telling you, the little sidesteps, the aggression is so was, what? Oh my God, one more hit. Oh, oh Junior no. got the stone head, but it wasn't on the wall, so he doesn't get wall splat. Oh, and finishes it off with the parry telling him i'm seeing all your moves and that's gonna be two to zero for toby that was crazy i love that you do your homework sam i love that you do your homework back in tekken 7 they started on frame 8 and now they start on frame devil. 7. I, lo I love that you know your homework pastel tommy versus aimed two Ooh. coming up this one right here could easily be a top 48 top 16 or oh, even yeah. top eight match yeah this is gonna be a good one all right, starting off strong. Oh no, dropped the combo, but did have the right idea. Yeah, he's going for the crouch dash too, but he only got down to instead. Finds that even paw in there. Oh, counter hit setup as well. Does this put the heat dash there? Yeah, there it is. only would have given him an extra attack, which this is 
the demon paw what he really wants. The heat dash that allows him to put aim two at the wall, either on block or on hit. But it's cool to see people make that decision. It's one of the things I yeah. love about Heat is that you definitely get to see that play style in people's place in, in their game. It didn't used to be that way, right? At the beginning of the game, you had to Heat Dash when you hit one of these moves. And now it has changed. Now you can Heat Dash whenever you want. Pastel Tommy is getting completely oppressed by AIM 2's chainsaws, but already he's got the opportunity to bring it back. Oh, gets the float with the jab too. Gonna be a little bit of extra damage than normal because of rage and actually spending heat versus well to get to the wall. Yeah, it is a float though, so the scaling is definitely down there. Aim two waits and Pastel Tommy waits for them. The fast turn stuff. That is the complete 360 degree turnaround to put Pastel Tommy in the tied up situation instead of being two rounds up. Yeah, that's tough because you saw Pastel Tommy actually didn't go for the crouch dash because he wanted the whiff punish and he was slightly too late on his demon paw. Ooh, speaking of which, there's demon paw and there is the electronic duff right there. Aim 2 is showing us how strong that move can be. A little bit of delay on the string there catches Pastel Tommy on the wall. Gonna get the break as well. Gonna spend it. Oof. Ooh, aim two puts themselves on the other side, but now we're basically on the same map advantage after aim two went for the heat dash. Pastel Tommy trying to use some of those strings to catch aim two off guard. Pastel Tommy though, whiffing and not getting the ability to be able to break this throw. Yeah, it's kind of the pixel of health left though. Tries to spend it and another fantastic sidestep left from aim two and then we'll take the first game. One of the best sidesteps in the game, one of the best backdashes in the entire game, and one of the most oppressive rushdown games once the chainsaws are out. Many, many people call this a top five character. What do you think, Sam? I think it's one of the best characters in the game, but I, I really want to highlight what Aimed 2 is doing specifically. Sidesteps are great. Their sidesteps are great. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But sidesteps aren't nothing without the player. The you have to be the one who sidesteps making those reads with the character and then responding to them accordingly. And when you have a good sidestep, it's great. Don't get me wrong. But you got to use it well. And, and aim two is definitely showing it off. Yeah, I love how you said that, Sam. It's not about the movement, it's about how you use the movement. You can sidestep all you want, make your opponent whiff, but if you're not doing anything about it, then you're not the one. Pastel Tommy trying to use some more of these homie moves to stop Aim2 from being able to get away from them. Oh, double low. Goes for the plus frames. Actually, just backing up, expecting Pastel Tommy to do something, and that's something right there. Gets a big hop kick. We're going to pop the heat as well. Aim 2 did not hit the wall, so they are still standing, have the ability to get out. But the my toe, my toe into the back 2 1 stopped that cold. Really interesting to see Pastel Tommy actually sidestepped right there. Nice sidestep right there. He <laughs> gets a big launch. I was going to say he did it because he, he wall crushed with the heat first and still sidestep. He's, he's definitely looking for something there. Another great position, though. Use the knockback to be able to get out of the wall. There's another sidestep left, but unfortunately, it does not make it so that Pastel Tommy gets walls flat, and Aim 2 and Pastel Tommy are essentially still fighting toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Oh my god, oh, the great life! Yeah, I need to recover some of that, buddy. Oh god, gotta get some of it. Spends it quite early, but a hefty lead. Scary, though! Oh no, whiff! Get the oh my the god, the jump over, not ducking the third hit of the string there is wild. The downboard 1-1-2 one, one, is a mid-high high, and Pastel Tommy's just like, you know what, I don't feel like ducking this, and what a read. Oh, a lot of scramble there, Pastel Tommy comes out on top, this is the combo there, that sucks. Ooh. We are letting loose with these intrusive thoughts right there, aim to puts the head onto Pastel Tommy and puts their entire mind into finishing out that round. It's, it's tough, man. You drop that combo and then aim two gets, you know, the, the heat engager. You're, you're like, darn, man, I, if I didn't just drop that combo, they're at the wall. You know, I get all this Oki and now the whole momentum flipped. 
shoe shine and another side step right. This is exactly the side that they've been telling you for years to step Jin and aim to is that, yep, I read that book and I practice. I saw the charts. I know what I'm doing. Oh, counter hit. It's a big down three again towards the wall. Drops the ender all on the back. It's side switch somehow. Oh my God. Here's the chainsaws again, and AIM2 is trying to really wait on these strings and make Pastel Tommy hesitate, but he will not. And he keeps trying to fight back. Mm -hmm. AIM2 goes for another meaty sidestep, and that is going to do it for Pastel Tommy, a often chosen as a top eight seed. More damage, and uh, that, that value is completely lost when you drop a combo like that. It's kind of tough, but you know, uh, enough for me. I, we're gonna keep the bangers coming for you guys and here it is raccoon versus peeling we got inconsiderate raccoon the demonic being no longer going for devil Jin, now choosing the june kazama what a very interesting choice yeah staying in the family Let's see how this one goes Ooh, big counter hit launcher right there and peeling is on the wall and just like we were saying earlier most important thing get him to the wall get that advantage get that oki make them guess i love that he first too not only because he got the you know finish in that situation but so close to the wall it was kind of weird whether you would wall splat or not let's keep it simple just he first and normalize the combo and finish it off it's really nice to have that combo tool that allows you to just go, all right, I just can also think for an extra second as well. Peeling uses it here, goes into the heat smash after the down back two, the tried and true classic sequence. Inconsiderate Raccoon maybe could have tried to sidestep left, but I think Inconsiderate Raccoon is on P2 side, which means that they actually could not have sidestepped out of the heat smash. Definitely one of those things very hard to consider in the heat of the moment. Oh, gets a hit though. Big combo. Gonna go into heat. It's definitely what Xiao Yu wants to do. Go into heat off that combo and then use all of their meter in the mix ups. But Inner Consider Raccoon fights off really well. With a hypnotist, yep, you get a great punish with June. She has a 10 frame while standing or uh, up forward one that can do a lot of work for the. <laughs> June player that is against Ling, but unfortunately P Ling is like, I'm just gonna get right back up off the ground and put the dirt into you. Yeah, a little sidestep is expert from P Ling gets that launch to clean up the round. P Ling, oh my god, I'm gonna keep doing it! <laughs> Found. Yeah, gonna use the floor as well. Very nice. Oof. Just uses the heat smash gun here. Or actually hasn't used the heat smash yet, excuse me. Healing, trying to go for some strings. And what did I say earlier? Strings are a risk, but Healing is still coming out of here. And again, the heat smash. Oh, recovers all of this life and it lets him survive, but only for a second longer. Raccoon able to tie up the round count. Final round already, Sam. Again, pressing. You're trying to do these moves. You're trying to steel turns away from me i have already taught you this lesson why don't you learn we'll try to step on the back turn and inconsider raccoon had the right idea the immediate can gains to punish heat smash push towards the corner peeling tries to take turn little Notice step spacing yeah and inconsider raccoon really wants to be close he tries to go for the hop kick right there nothing doing peeling actually gets a flow and yes you can sidestep a lot of those options if she continues to dance like that yeah, looking for the charge up there and Raccoon responded accordingly, but uh, it just has a second longer. Oh, recovered enough health, but it finishes the string and Peeling's able to make the comeback at the last seconds. Takes the first game. I think that was a high move that happened right there. If Inconsiderate Raccoon had done a high crush, maybe the button would have been something that could have closed out. But... This is looking real close. Top 48 qualifier. This is not even a top 48 match. Strap yourselves in. Tekken Never Sleeps number 23 is gonna be legendary. Yeah, dude, this is this is a crazy, crazy racket. 310 people. I, I really genuinely can't believe how many people are here for just you know, maybe this is their Evo prep, or maybe they're just in here for a good time. One way or another, this is going to be one of the best back online brackets you're going to see of the year. Real ones, no. Tampa never sleeps.
every single time. Ooh, and consider it, Raccoon has his back to this wall and actually gets the wall splatted on them. Peeling chooses not to break that wall just yet. Very interesting choice. And a 13 second perfect shows that the decision was correct. Yeah, I love seeing those decisions for people, especially now that they nerf the combo damage that you get off breakables. You know, you make those decisions are, are, are pretty important now. Yeah, but they actually did a little buff on them too because of the recoverable health that is taken away from floor bursts and balcony breaks as well. So, you know, it's kind of a give and take. Speaking of give and take, Peeling tries to give Inconsiderate Raccoon some of this wall disadvantage and Inconsiderate Raccoon says, why don't you take this combo? That's a little bit, steps the burst as well. Nice break, right. saves their life. Ooh, the 1-1, one, one. Inconsiderate Raccoon using a lot of the jab strings. He loves to use jabs in his offense and what a fantastic duck and punish on the firecracker very often mispunished by a lot of the members of the community, but not by Inconsiderate Raccoon. Taking these little hits on the on the feet. Oh, counter hit, gets a combo off it too. Nice combo. Once again, didn't wasn't sure how far you get close to the wall, so just gonna spin that burst, normalize the combo. The breakable behind Raccoon. Gonna use the burst just to get some space behind them. And a great step there to get around the string. Cleans up the round and in a considerate Raccoon in the lead in this game. See what happens when you do your homework, folks. You see what happens when you look at the spreadsheets that somebody must have made that lets you know whether or not you can step these strings. Another one in considerate Raccoon says, passing the test with flying colors. Ooh, one more on the ground. Try to get that little hit afterwards was a little bit too far. But Inconsiderate Raccoon does have to worry about the breakable behind them. Spend the heat first, getting another hit and I'll catching Peeling on the way in. So many great decisions in those last two rounds. And Inconsiderate Raccoon is going to be able to tie it up. I got to tell you, that was looking pretty damn strong. And I have to say, I have heard some people talk about the strength of this character after 1.0.5. However, I don't get to see a lot of play for these characters. So it's really nice for Inconsiderate Raccoon to show me as well as all of Tampa Never Sleeps what this character can do now. It is looking very, very different. Yeah, it's really cool. I think, uh, you know, obviously the character dropped off a lot and two patches ago, she got big nerfs. Came back a little bit in 105 with some good buffs and uh not really sure where she stands because of what she said kind of underrepresented at the moment and uh rack definitely teaches a lot today oh nice step but unfortunately consider raccoon uses a string that is delayable and has the ability to catch the timing appealing heat smash and that's gonna do it Oh, just delaying the timing ever so slightly. Catch appealing, moving or pressing a button. Got the wall splat, takes the round. They get a really good wall splat for themselves right here as well. You think they're going to get the guaranteed damage on the end? Oh, bro. Rookie clear? I didn't even know you could do that. The Oki. Oh, my God. This is exactly Ling's play style. Just going to heat as soon as you get a big combo and use the rest of the meter to mix the hell out of your opponent. Very interesting using the forward forward three there, maybe trying to catch a considerate raccoon, trying to do a spacing trap. Speaking of spacing traps, Peeling executing a fantastic one right there. Yeah, Rack's been really good at catching Peeling coming in, but that time Peeling takes advantage of that situation. Oh, oh. catches him on the ground as well! He's fallen victim to one of the classic blunders, only lesser known as never get involved in a land war in Asia. Inconsiderate raccoon though, pressing too much and that eight frame great wall left, stopping that pressure cold. Definitely an expert move for an expert player. Slip it in when they least expect it. Takes the round. No launch on the Tooth Fairy. Uh oh. Oof. Step hop kick. This is scary. Gonna get the hit. Yep, gonna go into heat burst. Scary situation, especially with their options. 
This match so important in this situation. Peeling tried to go for the mid, the safe option that actually makes their plus. And Peeling does execute and walks slowly up to the corpse of their rival to put the- Showed me that they're really thinking about these characters, kids. Hey, look at that. Thanks, bud. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. Really showed me that uh, they, they're really thinking about the characters' kits in totality and trying to implement them in Tekken 8 in a way that makes them fun and unique and, and still adding to the character. As we get into this one, from one great Ling in the United States to another, we got Coddle Core coming up against DB Floyd. Ban Banana Muffins versus Wins Marvel. I also agree. Ooh, the spacing trap right there. The back one plus two putting... DB Floyd already at half health. Kotokor scores a really great knockdown, but DB Floyd Ooh. has heat and gets a launch of their own. Yeah, great read there, going for the back one. Trying to stuff an option afterwards, but the little sidestep into the launch punish for Floyd. Just that tiny delay to be able to get that heat smash right there. Kotokor does not get that first round, even though they got the first big combo. I'm back to Heat Engager. Oh, chucking Swing against down. the down forward one. Oh, they tried to sidestep left side, walk left even to get away from the wall running three, but unfortunately it didn't work even though this move looks so, so linear. Spends the heat first, trying to get some frames and yeah. Did it dash there? He mm. still had heat, right? He yeah. could have dashed for plus five. Yeah, and basically make it so that they didn't get punished in that situation. Huh. Yikes. And here it is. Another 12-frame Punisher. Kotokor opts not to go for the knockdown. Just goes for some stand-up game. Oh. Or three. Great homing move. Right over the low. Yeah, Power Crush. Super slow on Leo, but get it to hit. It's a good way to get the pressure off you. Ooh. Great heat engager. DB Floyd needs a little bit extra to come back and the counter hit down for two plus three. Nerf that move, please. Although it's short range and very linear, that is its weakness. Though Cuddle Core's timing was caught by it. Yeah, off of the BOK2, right? The space traffic created from that pushback. Great use from it for DB Floyd and 10 second route from Cuddle Core ties up the round count. That right there is a speed run if I have ever seen one. Oh, does not get the guarantee follow up afterwards for a combo. Does get the somersault DB Floyd and Cuddlecore trading knockdown. Oh, but we're not trading this one. While standing two, counter hit. Doesn't spend heat just yet. It's that while standing four heat engager. Oh, making a hard read there. Expecting the opponent to duck, especially because he did down forward two plus three on the previous heat engager. So he thought that maybe Cuddlecore would make a read on the low. It didn't work out, and Cuddlecore takes the first game. It was a very interesting option at the very end. The hypnotist stance opened, and DB Floyd said, I'm going to parry here. I think you're going to go for the mid. I think you're going to go for the option that is safe. And Kodakor is like, why would I do that? I need to kill you. You're going to die. Yeah, it's definitely a, a really interesting round in the situation there for from both players making really interesting decisions because of, you know, things that were happening previously before the match or sorry, during the match and, and trying to expand Get upon it. So, I mean, that's that's what you get at the high level is definitely trying to figure out how much your decisions influence the opponent right there and even if you know that mix of off the heat engager didn't work out for db mm -hmm. floyd just being able to know that you know hey i tried to do this mix and it doesn't work out all right then i know how to go forward from here there it is now kodakor is going for the mid like oh you like to parry the mid how about we try to make sure that that happens again? The AOP stops DB Floyd from getting their hop kick, but the counter hit down for two plus three once again. Not yeah, gonna go for a corner carry there. CD 2-1. Cuddlecore is just playing that back and forth game and DB Floyd is like, all right, cool. I'll use my linear tools since you're not stepping as much, but Cuddlecore does just run DB Floyd over. Yeah. Oh, wow. Round start. <laughs> While standing, too, of all things. Yep. Goes for charge up. 
small timing delay on that duck. A lot of people are using sidestep to delay their timing, but DB Floyd is like, mm, I think I'll delay my timing with the duck. Cuddlecore gets this big launcher here and is getting more knockdowns as well. Nice, great block. One of the advantages of Leo, that 11 frame crouching heat engager, being able to turn a small punish into something huge. Extremely strong. One of one of the stronger heat engagers in the game, if you ask me. Nice, good, but they didn't run heat dash in that situation. Actually, I don't think they can. I think that's just a really cool looking strain. <laughs> yes, you're right. That is just a, a extension that she get or they get when they do the lightning glare ender. Mm -hmm. DB Floyd is on their last leg here. Speaking of legs, they're trying to chop down a cuddle core's legs at the beginning of this round. Ooh. Once again, DB Floyd is trying to step on cuddle, but it's not working out. And that was a counter hit side step four, because that's why they got launched. Cuddle core running though, running threes. Just run that game plan. You do not get the ability to kill with keepers. She does not heat dash there. What? What is this? Our, I feel like we've seen this so many times through. And uh, I, you're you're right though. TNS uh, taking the flag and keeping it running. Mm -hmm. And we got a great one for you here. Oh, bro, is this the, it's not Robin Hood. It's the person that shoots the apple off of your head or something like that. I don't know. But <laughs> Wizzy just rocking the Dragon Off custom as we know. Wizzy already going in the first 10 seconds for a heat burst. He wants to continue this. Bro, somebody is going to lose some double digit wins here. There, there, there's some hefty streaks on the line. <laughs> we'll see who, who takes first blood. Oh, that back forward three. Wizzy loves to use the small buttons and his jabs. First hit of the woodcutter string. Trizzy the rapper gets that full crouch transition and finishes out with that low. Pop me, no go. It was low that time. Love Another heat burst in the first 10 seconds. Very interesting, Sam. Yes, it, it, it's definitely trying to take that turn away from the opponent. Is he there immediately spending the smash as soon as they get the opportunity? And it flips the screen. Trizzy gets a big a classic, hit. That's a classic right there. Minus four into a six frame high crush. Wizzy, though, is like, you know, I got out of there. Yo, he just stood there. He just said, I'm going to be right next to you. What are you going to do, flash? You're not going to flash. You got nothing. Get out of here. My round. Yeah, big round, right? Instead of doubling their lead, it's all tied up. Off the play. Get out of there. Plus frames? Oh, tried to respond with a down two, expecting a jab or something because of the plus one. Oh, Wizzy just going forward neutral to be able to neutral guard in case Trizzy wanted to try that Oof. setup again. Finally got a challenge on the pressure. Right place, right time. Trizzy gets a big launch. And right spacing as well. Jumps over and Wizzy actually does the correct <laughs> thing, but he does it at the wrong time. When Yoshimitsu is in flee, you definitely want to be using your power crush, your heat burst, but there it is, the flash. Trizzy, one of the most discerning players when it comes to using the flash. He only uses the flash at the perfect times. He's got like a 90% hit rate on this stuff and not yes. as good as the Wizzy down forward two though. Excuse me, the Trizzy down forward two. He's got it rocking for us tonight. Oh, let's rip on the string to a great sidewalk. Gives Wizzy the wall. This is the chance to make the comeback after this huge damage. Mm, the spin. We talked about how strong it is once again. And the dragonfly stance as well. If you just stand still, if you just try to duck or hold back, that spirited away will catch you unless you hold duck to really call it out. Dragonfly stance really got buffed in this game, but only because the dragonfly stance now has transitions that put him frame tight into being plus. And, you know, if you just go raw into Dragonfly stance on like a big knockdown or something like that, it is very difficult to finish out the round in a way that's not, oh man, I have to flip this coin. I have to guess properly. Yeah, all the options that he has out of it, it, it makes it really difficult to make a, a decent read because they Get all seem the relatively valuable. Like they're, yes. they're in, in similar value to one another. Yes. 
Um, so like, you know, as opposed to other stances, the other stances that have like super high value on one side and the low value on another, so you can kind of guess on what they're going to go to more often than not. It's, it's a little bit more difficult with Yoshi because of that. Here's the Rapper starting and getting the hop kick, which we know him so well for. Wizzy has been using these small tools, but has not been able to capitalize and follow through. Oh, oh, he got the, he got it! He got the step and it just didn't work. That sucks. Yeah, well, that's because that move tracks to that side. Wizzy stepped to Yoshimitsu's weak side. However, that move specifically is very, very strong to that side. That's why it is negative 12. At least that's what I think the design decision was. <laughs> Speaking of design, Trizzy figure this one out. He drew up the plans for that down forward too before we even got in the room. Yeah, already carrying towards the wall. Again, a quick spend. Trying to keep the pressure going. Oh! Caught him reaching a little bit too far. Goes for the low and Trizzy all of a sudden set point. Yeah, a lot of people don't think that the Kincho Stance moves are going to track, but they absolutely will. The Kincho Stance will realign with you once the button is pressed. Wizzy, though, is realigning with the round count, I think, here. Looking to try to get a perfect on Trizzy. Not going for it, though. Yeah, spent the Heat Dash immediately, trying to get some space behind them, but wasn't enough. Wizzy is able to take the round. I step low parry at the beginning of the round. What a great opening gambit. One of the best things that you can do to evade an opponent's immediate timing attack. Break, yeah, he dash for a combo. Gonna be scaled a lot because of the guard crush. Ooh, the back one cut the correct spacing, but Trizzy wasn't believing in it. Wizzy needs to get a heat engager here so that he can get all of this recoverable Whoa. life back. However, the Wizzy running two, hey, unfortunately gets counter hit by the flashing steel and it, who was able to defeat NY Toby. And next up we have Ukio, another fantastic Yoshimitsu main. Who, one of my favorite Yoshimitsu mains, in my opinion, the sauciest Yoshimitsu main in North America. Let him show you with the sword instead of me with my tongue. Yeah, Ukyo definitely, when when 8 came out, I every, people were asking, hey, what do the Yoshi players look at? And, you know, I musician options it comes up. But in NA, definitely one of the people I mentioned was Ukyo because he rocked this character so well from 7. And he's looking good in 8 as well. I like the meditation stance right there. You have a life lead with Yoshimitsu, and it is very difficult to get that back and for the other player. There goes the flash. Are we going to see an unblockable? No, just immediate heat smash. Just run it. Slow, double low, takes the first round. round two. Fight. Now, uh, Yoshimitsu actually got nerfed, his healing did, because he only recovers recoverable health with his meditation stance now. So it is a little bit easier for Yoshimitsu to lose the life lead when he has it. Speaking of which, Ukio certainly does not have the life lead after this big combo that on my behalf running. Oh my god, the damage! I know that I know that's Lee's thing, but oh my god, there's all of the health. 443 easily one of the best heat dashes in this game if you ask me. Super strong. Oh. Yeah, this, this character Lee, he gets you on a wall once and feels like it's over. Get some oh. space. Yeah, I like that move. That power crush actually gave a lot of pushback as well. Even though the pushback on those attacks did get nerfed, they are still quite useful. On my behalf, try to go for those hard combos. And you know what? I'll just sidewalk and get some more damage. This is the damage I deserved in that combo in the first place. Oh, they are dancing around each other. On my behalf, though, takes advantage here. Back against the wall for Ukyo. Now parallel to it. And actually takes the wall slide on the right side. Ooh, the slap, you silly. And Ukyo got pseudo punished right there. Can the Rage Art do what it needs to do here? Sam, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think yeah, even just a raw one would have done enough damage there, but that's going to be it. Kyo takes the lead. Fight. 
Yeah, regardless of if it killed or not, it would have destroyed all the recoverable health, so definitely Ooh. a great move. Speaking of great moves, the sidestep one, counter hit launcher, he's had since Tekken Tag 1, and it has not Ooh. changed properties since. It is super strong. On my behalf, dealing with that flea stance quite well there, but wasn't able to take any offense out of it. Ukyo able to get a big combo here. Oh, he couldn't get the heat burst there. Little slight axis change. Uh, maybe old heat burst it would have worked. On my behalf, has the opportunity to bring it back, but unfortunately, that 3-4, those helicopter kicks, stop that possibility. I see so many Yoshimitsu players utilizing that move, the helicopter kicks, mm -hmm. the coup de gras that Ukiyo used there. It is extremely strong, and now there's an Indian stance move that does the same thing. And in the last patch, they decided that it got to be homing if you do it from the stance. So you're seeing that move a lot. Yeah, um, I, I think that the character does have like a lot of good tracking moves, a lot of good homing moves, but uh, just being able to, the, the, one of the reasons why it feels like it's really difficult Get to play against this character is because battle. it feels like he has those great homing and tracking moves and he has like a, a great set of them but he gets to spin around like an a asshole and <laughs> just That's true. get away from everything that you do but hey on my behalf i will say the one round he looked good in is the time he got ukyo on the wall Let's see if we can do it again yeah i i gotta say remember yoshimitsu when he doesn't spin he does not have a very good sidestep so you definitely want to use your tracking options against him. Ukio is using the short version of the Soul Stealer spin. Tries to get the launch on the down three, but unfortunately cannot. Does get the heat engager though, and is super in the life lead. Plus frames. Looking for something there. Maybe a flash. What did I say? Just backdash. Literally just backdash. See, on my behalf was listening. He listened to you and took a round for it. Great stuff on my behalf. Just playing Yukio against the wall most of the time. Oh, heat engager. And it's very difficult to be able to see that unblockable coming when Ukio's got that custom going on as well. He's got different hit sparks as well. So on my behalf, really on this one. And yet again, did exactly what we were talking about. Let the Yoshi Mitsu kill themselves. Dude, this step right when the spin was so sick oh on my behalf every time they take a round it's because they get that hit that takes them to the wall and then takes the whole round for it he was trying to continue on me my behalf's pressure at the wall stops and just letting those strings not go finish making the big flash reads i'm not sure i agree with this one renee but it's okay does get the manji spin kicks yeah, on my behalf, you can tell that his offense is keeping the flash in mind, but Ukyo finds the right time to use it there. Oh my god, what a sick freaking combo. Into the flea? All right, that one's getting clipped. Ukyo goes for the heat burst here to stop on my behalf from trying to get their turn back, and they end it with a perfect. Oh, it finishes the string when you least expect it. Now Ukyo at set point. I told you this man's the sauciest Yoshimitsu in North America, but on my behalf, trying to eat up all of this sauce, trying to tell you we ain't gonna have none of that. Heat dash, taking the plus frame, responds with the heat burst himself. Nice, okay. Ukiyo goes and continues with the forward one plus two, and then Heat Smash has such great tracking, and that's gonna do and being like, no, no, because that means he's gonna get nerfed, right? But what's not getting nerfed is this set here. We thought it was gonna get nerfed. We thought we were gonna lose that first round because of the original controller DC, but Code of Course says, no, I wanna play out the whole set, so we're gonna get all those rounds. Yeah, a lot of sportsmanship for Cuddle. Obviously, you know, looking at that big prize in a couple of weeks here at Evo just wants to get these games in. Oh. Big on the back. Ooh, the Heartbeat Disabler, such a cool move and cool move name as well. Trizzy the Rapper is getting locked down right now by Cuddle. Trizzy trying to find that big opening that starts their offense, but Cuddle's making it really difficult between the chainsaw moves and a lot of the evasiveness. 
god. Look, look at the backdash, right? Like, just stay far away from your opponent, and they have to use those risky things to get in. And Kodakor just knew exactly the correct timing, and immediately, two seconds in, already has the heating engine. Yeah, great read on the round star situation. Going into this, already with a 50% life lead. Good thing she didn't press right there. She could have got counter hit launch. And the heat smash actually whiffs, but Trizzy spins, does not get what he needs to be able to punish. And Cutacore takes advantage and uses the dual boot to just chainsaw and drill through his rib cage from half screen. Yeah, the dashing drill move. So difficult to deal with. I feel like I get clipped by it so often. Punish on the crush. That's a guaranteed follow-up while you're in heat as well. Trizzy the rapper goes for the mid, trying to stay very clutch, trying to stay very safe in this moment right now because you do not want to take risks versus Scuttlecore unnecessarily. Ooh, and you definitely want to be breaking them throws. Oh, great step off Axis though. Wasn't able Brad. to get the combo. Double tragic that Trizzy couldn't be able to finish out that back turn and kill with Cuddle Cords back to her. And Trizzy using the meditation stance at that range put his back, the back of the neck, to Cuddle Cores fist. You know, in any other sport, we would call that an illegal hit, but all's fair in Tampa Never Sleeps. Yeah, uh, it's, you know, I definitely looking for some sort of comeback potential there and in going into meditation and especially doing it that close for Salisa, you know, perfect running two range. Uh, so tough stuff, but first round goes to cuddle definitely on the back of some really good aggression and also some phenomenal sidesteps. Yeah. Trizzy, just like me for real, for real. I a hundred percent have died a million times doing exactly that meditation stance at range two being way too close to your opponent. Trizzy now on Descent of the Subconscious. I think a great stage for Yoshimitsu because he has so many floor-breaking tools, floor-breaking throws, not just the rainbow drop, but also the spirited away from the Dragonfly stand. Yeah, I love this stage. It brings us so many unique ideas. It's just a small stage on the first floor here. It happened again. Trizzy using the meditation stance and getting blown out for it. Trying to cancel it immediately. Huddle going to those down threes is an answer for the meditation. No punish on the Kincho too. Maybe thought a follow-up was happening. Cuddlecore is in heat and in rage. Very last 50-50 and Cuddlecore uses the mid knockdown. Nice stuff. No punish, but second hit will do. Mm. Cuddlecore again, just not worried about these attacks. Trizzy might need to take a couple more risks here. Oh, great options. And there we go. He did take a risk. Kodakor knew exactly when to duck. You don't normally want to duck with your back yeah. to the wall versus Yoshimitsu, though. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say the same thing because the, the threat of the mid there is incredibly scary. That's, that's what makes Kodakor different. She's willing to make that read. Nice. Oh, the knockdowns, Kodokor staying Whoa. mid and then just going, now is the time. Now is the place. Put this hop kick right up in your face. The sidestep hop kicks have been so strong for Cuddle. But Trizzy gets a big low parry here. Going to stop a bit of the momentum. Going to go into heat actually as well. And Chris, a great combo. Chooses not to go downstairs just yet. Huge damage from the Kinshaw 2, 1 plus 2 in heat. And if Trizzy can go downstairs, he can kill with this combo, but I think he wants to save it for later. 23 second perfect. Yeah, it makes the throws that much scarier, right? So when a round end situation, you don't need that much health left. Let's save the floor for something a little bit more dangerous. Trizzy using that Dragonfly 4 into CD2 setup again, and Code of Course says that they've seen it too many times. They were able to evade the rainbow drop with that mid. Very interesting. Trizzy has already spent the heat, which may possibly be his last resource that he needs. Whoa. But the Trizzy down 4 2, Sam! Finally stopping him from stepping all around. Trizzy once again not using the floor just yet. This is crazy. This is absolutely something that could have gotten him a kill if he chose to use it. It would have lost a lot of recoverable health. And because he was on sidewall, 
Global Core got the throw or got the follow up. Didn't get the full combo though. 12 seconds oh. remaining. Didn't get walls wet by the ballerina spin either. Oh, it was a little bit too far. Oh, stabs. Last seconds. Oh, the big low. And it's 1% enough for Cuddle Cord. We'll read to know right when to do it. Because it wasn't like Trizzy wasn't mixing up the options, you know? It wasn't yeah. like he was doing it after the same thing over and over again. But there was just that and feeling that she knew right when Trizzy wanted to do it and then did it at the right time. But enough of that. Get into this next one. We already got the action for you. King Ray Jr. versus Peeling. This one is an absolute classic. We've seen it so many times here on Tampa Never Sleeps, and I cannot wait to see the next chapter of it. Again, Peeling coming hot off of a win from the two, uh, the excuse me, the sweet events last night, and the sidestep for grants the very first big combo. And I think Peeling is going to be close enough to get a wall here, Sam. Oh no, there's a reset in there. Oh, you don't see that all that often. King Ray Jr. goes for it. Yeah, full charge. Just gonna full charge and get some space. Opportunity here for both players, actually, now. Ugh. King Ray Jr. really was on the ropes right there, but chargeable rage art. What are you gonna do? Healing uses the small buttons, though, and death by a thousand cuts. King Ray Jr. does not get the first round, and healing is up. Yeah, the, the mind game that you have to play around the rage art for Asuka is so annoying. Sometimes it's just better to just accept that you don't get a punish. Yeah. Yep, you just literally go, all right, no 20% damage increase for you. Go ahead and make me get pushed back. I'll deal. But then King Ray Jr. uses those running moves from the long range when that happens as well. Healing, scoring a couple of knockdowns, tries to get the punish, not quite. King Ray Jr. gets a punish of his own into the destabilizer throw, goes mid twice in a row. Tries to take some plus frames with the heat first. No go on the whiff punish launch there. King Ray Jr. just backs up afterwards. Oh. Oh. Bro. <laughs> Peeling just sidestepping three times with their back to King Ray Jr. Like King Ray Jr. doesn't have an absolute shotgun of running attacks. Oh my god. He got the block on the jumping low. Didn't even need to with the time that was left. But King Ray is sending a message. Yeah, that is actually a launcher for this character. A lot of people don't know, but King Ray Jr. has been playing this game a very long time. He has been able to see the scrolls of the deep magic. Buffed up moves, all in heat. King Ray Jr. is so lucky that he didn't get punished by Heat Smash right there. He's not in the life lead. <gasps> Peeling is trying to put on this back dash. Doesn't get the back dash with punish, but still using those small buttons to destroy King Ray Jr. Oh, they got your nose. Just needs a pixel of health left. Backs up himself. Peeling taking a page out of King Ray Jr.'s book. Gets a hit on the way back in. Oh, 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 big counter hit to start the run and drops the combo. And then tries to power crush to save it and keep their uh, their advantage, but gets thrown out of it. And King Ray Jr. says, you know what? Fine. You don't have the Oki to keep me on the floor. Oh, the Nani will Gusto transition actually destroys King Ray Jr.'s momentum. Gotta be able to keep that tight. An unfamiliar, uncharacteristic combo drop. But he's like, you know what? I'll get another one. No big deal. Yeah, I mean, who, like normally you'd say those are huge drops. It didn't matter for King Ray Jr. in that round. Just got them right back. Ooh. I think that we're going to get pretty damn close to a wall here. We have possibilities of some Oki. King Ray Jr. not quite. But Peeling has got some movement to do to be able to get in. Maybe King Ray Jr. knows something we don't about the tracking of this character because he's sidestepping all over. He sidestepped down for two. Everything. Everything. Yeah. That was just like, like it was on one button. It just worked. That was crazy. How so, was it? I gotta think about what would Peeling do besides pray that he has the ability to find a stage that is smaller <laughs> to be able to try and get closer because King Ray Jr.'s spacing game was just 
way too tight. Peeling had to take way too many risks to be able to get in, and almost every time they did not succeed. Whoa. All right, let me see. That uh, that sidestep hop idea or launch idea is a really good idea. Let me uh, borrow that page from your book, in fact. Yeah, let me steal your homework for a second here, bro. Oh, you don't want to duck versus the hypnotist? Shame. Oh, you want to press afterwards and get this can-can? That's the shame. Damage on the wall. Peeling fights off the wall really well there. It's not going to be a lot of damage, but the situation afterwards is really good, and it's what takes the first round. round two. Yeah, the big sweeps are doing work. And the long game is going to really pay off because we know how much Peeling likes the hypnotist stance. This is a hypnotizing combo. Try to get over, but unfortunately drops it because they sidestepped. Yeah, try to go for something tricky there. It did not work out. A little bit too far, kind of not very perpendicular to the wall. Mm -hmm. Big hit. That's basically a combo for a 14 frame wall standing punish, but you don't get wall carry as much. Speaking of which, King Ray Jr. now with their back to a wall. Cancels. Trying to look for that response from King Ray. It's a heat burst. Ultra with punish, a little bit too slow. Still great positioning for King Ray Jr. Yeah. Oh, that long range Ooh. low. Healing goes for it twice, but the second time goes for the second hit of the string to try and get some extra cheeky damage. Maybe thinking a counter hit was possible. It was not. King Ray Jr. low pairing into the wall running three to get the second round started. Excuse me, third round. And just continuing that momentum. Healing fights off the wall really well, though. King Ray Jr. after the combo, his back's against the wall. Yep, guaranteed follow up here. No low punish right there. And Tornado Peeling is going to use some of this Oki that he is well known for. Oh my god, help! Help! What did I say, man? He was I'm using a lot of the lows and then he went mid. That killed King Ray. Somebody help me! There is a thousand of you watching! Someone did. This little girl's all over me. Good Another God, one of those dude. big lows. We're pressing on the plus frames. Peeling tried oh. to step off to the right, but I don't think had the ability to go and do AOP in time. The inner strength, that one inch punch caught them and we're on set point versus survival point, Sam. Dude, that, what a great response, especially when you get that kind of round from Peeling to respond with one of your own for King Ray Jr. Definitely put some win in your sails. Ooh, they didn't get the guaranteed follow-up afterwards. Ooh, sidestep two. Can they realign and move over to the other side? No, they cannot, but they are going to get a great float off of the firecracker. Yeah, going to carry towards the wall here. Plus frames. Oh, catches them trying to move. Too many plus frames for that. Yeah, that it could have been a counter hit or just peeling not doing neutral guard there. Peeling is getting stuffed at this wall. Tries to go again. He tried like four different times for that long range back, but he just always knows how to be able to go even further beyond. When you think there's only le nine levels in the game, he creates a 10th level and he's the final boss of it. Speaking of final bosses, these guys have been Woo! final bosses of many, many top eights, Ukyo and Shadow20Z. And let it be known, this is not Shadow20Z just trying Kazuya out. Mm -hmm. He definitely has had a Kazuya on lock for a very long time. And it looks like he took a shine to Case Gage play in CEO and said, you know what? That's a good idea. I'm just going to do that. 21 second perfect to get it started is sending a message. Yeah, you couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, he definitely played a lot of Kazuya in Tekken 7 as well. I don't know how many times he's pulled out in 8 specifically, but he is not the only person that has gotten some influence from Keske's play at CEO, man. That that guy made this character look so freaking fun. And uh, Shadow, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Shadow did backdash to be able to get out of the sword sweep range, but unfortunately wasn't good enough. Ukio tries to get the 14 frame punishable. Shadow 20Z does a 13 frame punish, but the first hit whiffs. What a tragedy for Kazuya Nation. Buff Kazuya, guys. <laughs> they said he was fixed, bro. I believed you. Wow, they were so far away. I had no thoughts that that was actually going to reach. Yeah, but it was an important heat engager. Just getting that space behind them, not being able to, or not being pressured against the wall. And actually, 
switching the script entirely, putting Shadow on the wall. Ooh. Oh, man, I thought Ukiyo was going to do one of my favorite wall setups, but he didn't end up doing it. Tragic. He does still have Shadow 20Z with her back to the wall, but a simple 10 frame punish will stop that quick. No punish on the steel pedal that time, but oh, double low. Second one doesn't work out, though. Oh, notice how he finishes this combo. It's going to give a lot of that life back, a huge amount of recoverable and real life. A little low, oh, and we're going to get that finishing, going for the heat engager combo or uh, string there. So could have stayed safe even if it didn't hit. Oh, small, small buttons right here. Yo, Shadow 20 finishing off the tsunami kick. This is scary. Easy thing there to do versus Yoshi's steel pedal hitting very nicely for good damage off the ground. Oh, Ukyo getting some of that recoverable life back. You know, you, you're laughing. You're like, oh, this is cheeky. But this is exactly what Yoshimitsu is good at. He's oh, yeah. good at getting his life back and making you come in and baiting you. Another situation Ooh. where the Twin Pistons should have gotten a 13-frame launch on the middle of the Manji Spin Kicks. Didn't work. But actually, the second hit Twin Pistons did very interesting spacing for Ukiyo. Normally, I would tell people if you're going to try and deal with Yoshimitsu spin kicks, mm -hmm. once you block a couple of them, just mash your 13 frame punish because no matter what, whatever Yoshimitsu does cannot cannot interrupt. However, in that situation, you, uh, <clears throat> Yukio went for the Indian stance transition, which must have been what made the first hit of Twin Pistons whiff and the second hit still was able to reach in Tornado, very much like the interaction we saw in the first game. This is all some really niche stuff I know I'm talking about here, but it is, it, it's the, the way that these games are being won. No, no, it's super important to talk about these little things, right? These, these are the make or break. When you get to this high of a level, it's those little things that really, really matter. They, they definitely separate the goods from the greats. Ukiyo sitting in the no sword stance here. Exactly why he's sitting in the no sword stance. They don't expect you to sweep on them. They don't expect you to be sliding. Don't you be sleeping on them. Do you hear this guy Fox have, by the way? He's having a time of his life watching some good ass Yoshi play. This is my man right here. This is Ukiyo. And he finishes off with the no sword stance Harakiri, which actually does absolutely nothing except look cool. Dude, everybody else is getting wartime flashbacks playing against this character, except for you two, who are enjoying a time of their life. That was a damn shame right there. Shadow 20 <laughs> he thought it was his turn, but this is Yoshimitsu. Yeah, more no short stance. You don't see this all this often. Whoa! Right time, right place. A little bit of a bigger hitbox when you're in no sword stance, but a little bit slower. So he's doing it at the right time there. And launches as well. And Kazuya definitely moves himself a lot forward to be able to be vulnerable to the flash. Harakiri into down one from back turn. Stops that. Oh, man, Ukiyo never goes for the launch option there, which I totally respect. Here, we have the opportunity to see a guard break set up. Will we see it? No, we will not. He wants the guarantees. Finally activated heat. Getting a lot of that recovery back on the health. But there's a big launch here. See if, how he wants to end it. I thought he was going to get to the wall. Yeah. The, Yoshi doesn't have the greatest wall carry. Nice down back one, two, heat dash to be able to get close. And Ukiyo with their back to the wall, he said, no, never mind, spirited away. Now your back is to the wall. <gasps> a down forward one to save a life. Opportunity for Shadow, but it doesn't happen. Ukiyo goes low and a big turnaround. Three straight for Ukiyo to tie up the game count. You think this stage had something to do with that? It definitely plays a factor for sure. I, I think that characters like characters like Yoshi like some big stages from free yes. space to, to, to roll around and you know maybe use some spins for free do do some mm -hmm. you know like stance cancel back dashing around Get making some space the where they want battle. and the big normals on, on top of which being able to just engage at your own time and not have to worry too much about what's behind you could be a play a big factor yeah you definitely want to have space to be 
Beatty in the situation. <clears throat> Shadow 20Z almost got the wall perfectly right there and says, you know what? I like the American reset method. I'm going to continue to do it. No punishing down forward 1 forward. That is now a punishable move right there. It's been years of us assuming that it's plus on block. So uh, it takes even our best players a little bit of time. And those those transitions for muscle memory over years and years and years is so tough. Oh, do it again! That's what I'm talking about. Ukyo, the repeat offender here. I didn't get the combo, and I didn't like that. So let me do another one. Takes some just like me for real. <laughs> no, thank you. Get off me. Was able to get the combo and the quick thinking from Ukyo. Let's do the fastest move we can. Well, he dashed up and got down for two, but he needed a dash electric instead. Tragic. Shadow 20Z definitely has the ability to come back. There's that backdash that I was telling you about. All you gotta do, backdash, and you beat this character. I'll try to get the wall flat with that string there. A little bit too far. Sidewall didn't splat the way that Shadow wanted, and Ukiyo's gonna take advantage. Nice reverse here. Are they gonna get over close to a wall? Not quite. Basically still in the open. There's the guard break, but Shadow 20Z was too far away for Ukio to get the combo. Tragic. I don't know if Ukio expected him to get hit by that. I mean, I don't know why would you, but it threw him off guard. People don't usually Ooh. mash on the delay right there. You usually expect the guard break, especially it looked like Shadow wasn't going to do anything. So he's like, I'm going to get my right. guard break. But then, you know, he used down to two, which is the best pickup that you can use. And it was still not going to work. Maybe it's, you're right. Maybe he was just hesitating a little bit. But you know who's not hesitating? Shadow 20Z. He is ready for Ukio to look, take this L right here. Down for two, the abolishing fist. going <laughs> to abolish this life lead. Oh, my God. Going for that down for two. Oh, no, thank you. Get <laughs> Using the armor so well. That's the second time. Gets the combo this time, however, to take the round. Okay. Dragonfly stance, but does nothing into it. He says that he doesn't want to take these risks, but the timing read, Sam. Oh, I should say, by the way, it's not like DJ's. His steel pedal is not safe, so he's making a hard read there. Dude, Ukio doing these really hard combos in these really clutch sets, you gotta love it. Doesn't he recovers a lot of health. Ukio tries to take the turn back there. Oh, nice, Ukio does it and get it that time and will take his life first before his own and Ukio takes the set to itself and also does like 80 plus damage it was super good uh yeah i love cd21 though enough talking though finally get some stuff on the board for you. rhythm dude i i've been i have been privy to this character for a little bit now this guy is good this guy extremely. is extremely extremely well he's cut from the same cloth it nate the same dna as joe crush this is joe crush's brother neither here nor there though after school sophie trying to put on some of this pressure of their own but rhythm just runs up and gets the steel pedal from shaheen and tries to get an extra hit off the wall combo that they actually am not allowed hard to left they get the launch here sidewall a little bit weird for the combo though Sophie gonna finish the string, catches Rhythm off guard, get some space behind them, biggest part, and able to clean it up. Nice first round. Gotta feel good about that one right there. Great <laughs> sidestep into the what in the good googly moogly? Sophie looked like she had that down. Like she was ready for it. Just, yep, calculated. I calculate you're not calculated. I can even predict your angle. Ooh launch here though that could be a lot of damage but oh the wall disagree carry. look oh, at that yeah. i was wrong i was absolutely wrong the wall ender there catching a little bit more on top of it Oof. this could do a huge chunk rhythm goes into sneak stance destroys all of the recoverable life with a hornet oh. strike and rhythm stops after school sophie from using the wake up kick Dude, the, the ability to take the gray life in that situation from like a 10 frame situation is so good. Mm -hmm. It's so scary. Oof. Oh, oh got the wall right there. Not quite. I wonder if he wanted it. It would scale the combo quite heavy, and this pressure is very scary. 
I really thought that it should have wall split there, and this is yeah. Rhythm we're talking about, right? I feel like true. Rhythm knows Ooh. that. Knows uh, the down forward two. Stick to him like glue. Put those down back two ones in you, and now you're through. Sheesh. Dude. I will say, I, you know, one, one thing I love about Tekken 8, uh, they changed a lot of the down forward two animations. They're like, yes. Yes, no. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. There's no no more right angle down forward twos across the screen. Yeah, and Shaheen's animations have been so cool to watch. Just like that one Ooh. right there. Super cool. He had a move just like it back in Tekken 7. Either here nor there. Oh man, he didn't go for the recoverable health to kill her that time. Just said, mm. I'm gonna go for damage instead. And that is a really tough situation to deal with because the 423 got buffed so that you're basically looped into another of those yep. am i gonna get guard broken or am i gonna die from a mid situation it's so strong you saw that change right what did you feel yeah, about yeah. that it's it's really really good it's really good because when you like talking about whether people want to spend all of their heat on you know just the heat smash or spend it on little things that's like one of the things that you have to worry about right there and uh, I, to your point, I think Rhythm actually went for the 4-2-3 there because they didn't want to push them off the wall, wanted to keep the pressure going, wanted to loop that mix again. That's kind of why you saw the heat smash went for a mid instead of the high guard break afterwards. So just trying to constantly put that mix on and then threatening the opponent with stuff like that is really scary. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Rhythm trying to go for some slide mix, you know, like I'm ducking. What am I going to do now? It's one of the scariest things in Tekken, if you ask me. Yeah, and the player, dude, the Law and Shaheen players who have crafted that to a science, super duper good. Lee still, you know, it's, it's still not as scary as it used to be, but still very good for him as well. This stage can make it Whoa. so hard to get your combos Whoa. on. After school, Sophie also mm. did the same thing that Peeling did earlier, sidestepping right and then missing the hit to be able to keep the rest of the wall combo. Tragedy. Rhythm starting up strong again though. Oh my god, help. As this cool Sophie's spacing game here is pretty immaculate, but Rhythm has the opportunity to get out because all of the pushback of the raccoon swing, that full forward three that she was using so much of. Yeah, Sophie really trying to slow down the game. Maybe felt like the previous game got away from her a little bit. The speed mm. in which Rhythm was playing. Trade, though. Yeah, that's actually the best case scenario if you're going to get hit by that move. You want it to trade because if it trades, you don't get a heat engager. Rhythm gets the perfect amount that he could have gotten in that situation. He jumped back into wall standing two. That is nasty. But after school, Sophie says, mm, 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 mm. not allowed to have that. Oh no, stay on the ground and time up anyway. Got a little punish afterwards, but Sophie able to take the round count. In a new pace, by the way. Yeah, it's just slowing down the game a lot. Ooh, the raccoon swing catches Rhythm, trying to hop kick, trying to jump, do something. And then there's that final guaranteed follow up. Oh, speaking of guaranteed follow ups, after school, Sophie could have gotten that one too. But again, the fallen destiny Ooh. walls are nobody's getting the running two right after the heat engager expecting the high guard crush taking out a chunk of damage and wasn't able to blow through that one with the heat smash rhythm now at set point that that was a great read from after school's kofi but unfortunately yeah did not have enough life to be able to survive rhythm already in heat to get started but after school sophie's gonna spend a lot of that heat by putting rhythm in the air her use that 443 so much sam but it's it's a move that puts you in back turn at long range and rhythm is really taking advantage of that yeah rhythm doing really well to cover that space sophie trying to slow down using that 443 as you were mentioning to cover some space in front of rhythm but rhythm just pressing for the next battle oh here we go winner's side top eight King Ray Jr. versus Cuddle Core.
This one is going to be explosive. Now, King Reed Jr. has a lot of experience in the Alyssa matchup because he plays versus NG Obscure a lot in our monthlies. Let's see if that's going to be something that helps us out versus Cuddlecore here. Oh, he's in the gust of early on getting a combo. Great, great combo, in fact. Floated it perfectly to get a nice wall splat. Oh, bounds? Yeah, going to make it nice and simple. Super nice that that heat smash or heat bursts, I should say, uh, bound in that situation. Give you a nice quick option, especially if you can react really well. Finishing the string there. Oh, the pressure, the chainsaws. Using the heat dash, keeping it nice and simple with the down four four. Staple low. Oh, sorry, staple mid, I should say. First big launch goes to King Ray Jr. here. This is a scary situation. How many times do I see people lose to King Ray Jr. when they get the first launch and immediately get put their back against the wall? Yep. Hey, cannon event, 100%. Ooh, <laughs> nice heat burst right there. Uh, but King Ray Jr. go for the full crest up for two and unfortunately does not get a follow up afterwards. Challenges. Gets a throw afterwards. Ogi situation tough. Oh, the boost get up gets away from all of it. Nice shoot sign right there. Tries to move, but the chainsaws catches them anyway. Cuddlecore not getting caught pressing. And this is the character with one of the best side steps in the game. She moves into King Ray Jr., then side steps. Because remember, the closer you are, the better your side step yep. is. And it seems like that side step was super long. Like, like it was like, oh man, this is super late. She's gonna die for it. But this is Elisa. Oh, try to pick it up. A little bit too low on that float. A big down three counter hit once again. Okay, frame. This is the down forward one. Uh huh. Get him down. That's gonna do it. Cuddle Core takes the first game. And remember, this is a first to two. Extremely explosive game, Tekken 8. And that means that you have to adapt very quickly. What do you think King Ray Jr. could do to come back from this oppression? So you were mentioning it before, Elisa's movement, just crazy, crazy good. It's, it's one of the fundamental parts of this character that make it difficult to play against her. Um, and one of the things that I think that King Ray Jr. could do is maybe focus on those homing moves that are really strong for the character. She has mm -hmm. some of the best homing moves in the game, in my opinion, especially with the, the gusto buffs that she got. Yeah, I totally agree, 100%. And, and so, and uh, I think that people can think about fixing their combos up a little bit on the wall so that they don't get the, the ground tech ukemi and get off the wall. Sometimes you can go for the flip over stuff and, and get better Oki that way. Yeah, definitely. Ooh, Cuddlecore oh. tried to go for the grab right there, but got sidestepped too into a heat engager, which also splat the wall. So King Ray Jr. is oh. on essentially a two interaction <gasps> kill right here. Maybe too many hits on the wall between both wall mm -hmm. splats in order to, to get that enraged though. Definitely. Nice break. Ooh, Ooh great Ooh. counter hit throw, but Keldacore still breaks it. He's out the power crush there. Yeah, do it once again. It's super good. 15 frames, pushes out. Total Core still had the ability to stay alive, but got floated out of what I think was the down three or perhaps a dual boot stance transition. King Ray Jr. is certainly coming back here. Woo! We haven't seen one of those in a bit, but it was the right time to do it. Gets a big back three. Ooh. Oh, the running one plus two. That moved so good, Sam. Oh god, it's just between her two running moves just locks you down so well. And that time, guessed wrong, King Ray Jr. just tearing through this second game. Yeah, the down forward one, two. Huge amount of damage on counter hit to finish out that last round. Kotokor using that homing move. We were talking about some homing moves earlier. Alyssa's got some pretty good ones herself, but King Ray Jr. is like, you know what? Go ahead, use your homing moves. I will just absorb that hit, get my heat engager, and take this damage. Doesn't need to go into Gusto because they're already in heat and gonna heat engage off the power crush as well. Ugh. Ugh. My back, my neck, my neck, and my back. Oh my god, three straight. King Array makes a 
quick response here. He ties it up one to one. King Ray Jr. well known not only for his Rage Art usage, I call him King Rage Art Jr. And I think it is an apt name. He uses Rage Arts probably more than anybody in this game. Though, of course, it's Asuka. He was already doing this before he had one of the strongest Rage Arts in the game when it comes to, you know, being able to be chargeable. He already played Asuka and was running Rage Arts constantly. And now he's, you know, being a criminal about it. But he also uses power crushes like that as well. He's a liberal use, user of power crushes and always has been. Yeah, I mean, at least uh, Asuka, sorry. Asuka's was one of the best. It, not only high, but pushes out far. And 15 frames, bro. It's so fast. It goes so far and it's mm -hmm. so good. Yeah, they did change the tracking on it to make it less oppressive in that way, which is very nice. Kotokor using the running two to get the first knockdown here and backdashing away, but right when they want to come back in, King Ray Jr. just absolutely knows. Ooh, big heat engager for them. And Ducky? That's a lot of damage. Yeah, try to take turn back. Unblock those, which is going to take that little full crouch four. Plus frames? We're not worried about that heat smash plus frames. I got plenty of health. Don't worry about it at all. Yeah, Cuddle, playing that last bit of that round, really calm and composed, the life lead. Definitely something that she was crutching on in order to take it. Ooh, not breaking the throw. I want to note that it can be very difficult to play the 50-50 game versus Cuddle Core's Elisa because the backdash will stop all those power lows, like down one plus two that King Ray Jr. likes to use and just make them essentially ineffective. Cuddle Core, though, is about the same life lead as King Ray Jr. right now. After that string of events, yeah. though, takes a hefty life lead. The curse. I know. Takes the turn back. Nope, it's my turn. Plus frames. Plus ah, he dashes up to get the down one plus two. That's what I was talking about earlier. Ooh. Nice, gets a punish. Ooh, it doesn't break the throw and it's going to be enough damage. Collage from King Ray making that life comeback. Nice running two right there. We're both tied up on the round count. Kotokor gets the nasty side switch mix, but maybe not intentional. That's supposed to be a guaranteed follow-up. This is one of those strong homing moves that you were talking about earlier, right, Sam? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. See another one right there. Oh! A lot of health to recover for Elisa as well. Everything, even these little moves on block means so much when you're in heat. Oh, counter hit! Oh, oh no. no, unfortunate. They must have been off the side. Kotokor gonna backdash sidewalk. <gasps> no, no, no. You wanted to dash in and sidewalk like you did the last time. And King Rage Art Jr. strikes again. <laughs> that is the mind game. You can choose to play the mind game versus the Rage Art. We can talk about it after the, the game's over here. But King Ray Jr. is on set point. Oh. Nice Oki right there. Very interesting. Kotokor not ducking the second hit of down forward one, two at all, even though King Ray Jr. has shown that he will do that second hit. Oh, Ooh. Didn't expect it to whiff herself, so Kotokor wasn't ready for that whiff punish. That's a lot of damage from that running two. <laughs> Uses the meaty chainsaws. If King Ray Jr. would have got up ducking, he would have not have to take that mix. But uh, Kotokor is in the driver's seat right now, it seems like, Sam. Yeah, the momentum going towards their favor in this final, final round. Oh, punish. Forward two there is insane. Luckily for King Ray Jr., Kotokor did not launch. Didn't expect that one. That's a cool move. That move is called Heartbeat Disabler, and it's definitely doing that to me right now. Oh my gosh, King Ray Jr. is using the sidestep two to launch into instant wall standing four. What is this combo? Yeah, that's sick, but has a lot of life to go through. Oh, stays on the ground, just gonna eat a mid on the ground. Gonna create some space, the can cans after the heat dash. Oh, it wasn't Rage Art time. He doesn't want to take away the recoverable life. That is absolutely a throw attempt from Total Core. 
and that is gonna fill it out. Can we say it one more time, Sam? King Rage Art Jr. does it again. Bro. Everybody said, everybody else said something different. He said something else, so. Enough of that, though. King Rage Jr. moving on. Tuttle Core only dropping a loser, so saw another opportunity as we get into this one. We get a treat. Finally getting him on stage here. We got Joe Crush versus Ukyo. Joe Crush, only the eighth done here. Very interesting. Uh, maybe we're seeing something new coming from him. He, he's saying, I'm starting from basics out here. This is going to be an absolutely fantastic matchup. Oh no, Ukyo, the double spin into the long range sword sweep, thinking that Joe Crutch is going to try to come in, try to bait this man, Joe Clutch. No, sir, sir, sir. No, no, no. Your face is red. You cannot take the rest of that one. I don't know about you, whenever I see the, the extension out of down 4-2, it makes me feel so bad because I know he made a read on me or he got oh, yeah. the right side step, right? It's like, darn, I got extra blasted for this one. Yeah, it's like 42 damage or something just for the first couple of hits. It is insane and it looks super cool too. Ukio trying to get out of this wall using the jab into the key first does not do a spin to get away immediately with the 14 frame counter hit launcher and it finds its mark and they're using the forward one plus two would a heat dash would have taken even more health away from joe crush yes very safe option to do there towards the end but the first part works out joe crush however after the rounds tie up starts off strong Ooh, okay, try to spin after that. Joe Crush does not get launch punished for the Electric Mech God Fist. Luckily for him, Ukio steals some of that life. I gotta think maybe that was a CD2 attempt, or maybe he's just being a little cheeky. <laughs> Ukio's definitely the one to go into the, the deep pockets to find the tricky stuff, and that one will work out right there. Oh my god, the damage. Stays on the ground, though. Goes to them flee. No! no! Yes! <laughs> Oh, Ukio, you have just made me the happiest man on earth. You always do. Be careful on this stage. Both of these characters have extremely strong throw games. Neither here nor there, though. It did not have anything to do with that floor burst. Joe Crush uses the 4-3 string and finishes off Ukio's opportunities to break the floor. That's not going to stop him from using this throw, though. Honestly, all things considered, I think Ukyo will be quite happy that the floor got spent there as, as opposed to like a throw starter where you eat like 80 damage. That wasn't yeah. so bad. Yeah, totally. Honestly, yeah, a float, not the worst thing that could happen to you. Back to two right here. It's very interesting. They're using the Manji Spin Kicks to get the wall. Yo, empty Dragonfly. Dragonfly into nothing, into the low. This is high tier, genius level play we're seeing from both of these players. I wish that this was a first to three because, man, I could watch this set forever. I got to wonder, what does Joe do to be able to come back from this? Yeah, I think in my like, if you're if you're up to me here versus Ukyo, I think the, the wall situation is very tough versus this character. Not only for the even a little bit added for the matchup specifically, Joe being sorry, uh, Joe playing Jack. The character being one of the big body characters that has a, a not as good of a sidestep as the rest of the right. cast does right it's hard to get away from these things so you know mentioning you're He's mentioning before spinning, though you know yeah and and so but ukio was correct on the wall oki like most of the time and i yes. think that took a lot of the help from joe crush so if we can avoid those situations i think joe crush will be really happy 100 joe crush really putting on the pressure at the wall. Ukio getting the back blown out by the wall, running one plus two in that situation, but the Dragonfly is gonna stop them. Lots of spins, big body combos are getting done here. Joe says, I do not want any of this. I want you to have your back to the wall. Ooh, and the down jab actually with In any other patch of any other Tekken game, that would have hit that down jab would have caught uh yukio pressing that button but they patched it and made it so that that dragonfly 4 will absolutely low crush 
Oh, the great flash into the back 2-2 two -two guaranteed heat engager. Joe Crush has the opportunity to bring it back, just immediately spends all the heat. Doesn't get the follow-up at the wall, though. Doesn't need it. This is Joe Crush at the wall. He's got a backup plan for every single plan. Oh, Joe Crush is back dashing after the Soul Stealer spin. Ooh, up forward one counter hit. Most people forget that move even exists. He just immediately tech rolling the thing that you're not supposed to do versus Yoshi. And if you do guess right and Yoshimitsu whiffs the sword sweep, you should be able to get a large punish. Joe Crush wasn't sure about it though. And unfortunately, that means that he is just getting run over by knockdown Oki. And Ukyo is spending this time just sending Joe Crush wall to wall. But will Joe be able to bring it back here with this programmed uppercut that down forward too? With Ukyo at the wall, I feel pretty good about that, honestly. Uh-oh. Can you get the guaranteed break? No. That excuse me, the guaranteed block. You can frame perfectly block that at the wall and be able to not die for it, but. It is literally frame perfect. Ooh, they both going for their cheeky stances at the end there. Second 70 would have gotten a follow up after that, but they nerfed the 4 4 2 2. Super cool thing to see Ukio use it. I'm telling you, he uses the entire moveset. Nice key first. Joe Crush. Getting his back to the wall. Ukio just again using the empty Dragonfly stance. Sea Planner, this is exactly what we know Joe Crush to do. He loves to use the Sea Planner when he's in the throes of danger. But you know what Ukio loves to do? He loves to call you out to get where we are here. And Trizzy the Rapper defeats Pastel Tommy. Those were both three game sets. And now we have the tail of the tape here for you so that peeling and Trizzy the rapper a long time classic match that we've seen on tampa never sleeps before starting up for you for you in tns number 23. yes yeah, yoshi players eat well today but i mean it's what happens when two of the best players in the united states are yoshi players it's about the player not the character Oof. That was a big counter hit launcher. That was a 21 second perfect to start off this set. And that is absolutely the message you want to send to a character like a player like P-Link. Yeah. P-Link gets a flow combo after this. Yeah, actually going to go into heat in this situation, getting the extra damage on the wall. Ooh, good dash up. Thought maybe that P-Link was going to hesitate there, and they did. And P-Link doesn't get the chance to use the heat smash. That's a W right there. Yeah, ex having the heat expire on their side, Trizzy actually spent their own heat just to get some space. And after some spins and sidesteps, actually flipped the script. Peeling's back against the wall now. Ooh, Monty spin kicks times three. Ooh, no, 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 no. I'm not trying to duck. I'm not trying to get hit by your delayed hop kick mix. Chill with that. Peeling has 14 seconds to bring this back, and the hypnotist unblockable might be just the way you do it. Oh, the helicopter kicks whips. That's actually something that Trizzy uses all the time to catch AOP, but it didn't work at all. What a sequence. Oh man, both players staying really composed. I can't believe Trizzy got the break there in the scramble and starts this round strong really well again. The heat engager. Second hit whips. That was an important one for Trizzy to be able to not die for. Lucky him that he didn't. Oh, you wall action, trying to get some space. Didn't get it blocked, but after the situation, Peeling's away from the wall. That's what he wanted. We'll Try it again to get the 3 4. Peeling is getting the great spacing, but if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. That button is just so good. Yeah, punishing feeling for matching that back one. It's a great tool being eight frames, but it has almost no range. Right. And you don't get knocked out or you just get out of the situation. It's not quite as good as the eight frame flash that Yoshimitsu had. Absolutely. And this should be it. Gonna clean up the rounds. Yep, nice and simple. With a perfect Trizzy is able to take the first game. Yeah, you might say it was done very quickly. In a flash, you could even oh say. Oh my god. 
these Yoshi players are ready for this. I swear to God. They, they, <laughs> they write this stuff on napkins when they go out to the store. They're like, oh, I have a great idea. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Oh, man. I mean, hey, you, uh, it's uh, the Yoshi player is looking good right now. As Trizzy takes the first one here, over peeling. Not to say that there isn't enough Zhao Yu players here between Coddle and Ping. Get ready for the peeling. We got, you know, two of that as well. So it's not like it's a... Uh, I don't like it's a one-sided affair. Round one. We have two Yoshi Mitsus in top eight, and I'm just super geeked on that. Extra guaranteed follow-up, and you see it made the floor turn purple. Exactly what Trizzy the Rapper wants. He just needs to go into Dragonfly Stance one time to be able to make healing go downstairs. Can he go for the Spirited Away here? He chooses not to. Ooh, more than three, four. And Peeling maybe gonna use the downstairs here? No, no, no not quite. quite. Didn't get the opportunity, maybe wanted the wall before they went low. Or went to the ground, I should say. Ooh, it goes for the mid there. Peeling takes the first round. Peeling, been very good at dealing with Dragonfly though. I feel like he's floated him out. Uh, Trizzy, he's floated Trizzy out of him more times than not. Yeah, absolutely. Trizzy the Rapper eats the second hit of the low high string, and that is a lot of damage. Notice that that spike right there did not break the floor because it hits on the low wall slide. And Peeling gets that heat smash. That's not one of the, oh my oh. God, he spun out of the way and he killed himself. I was about to say, I don't think he got hit by it. He actually spun it, did not have enough life. Peeling up two rounds. Where's he playing the long spacing game here? Yeah, we saw oh, there it is. is. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Trizzy's been looking for that for a while now. Finally gets the opportunity to sneak it into his game. Yeah, I mean, we stayed on that stage and its purpleness for a while. You have to delay to be able to get that timing. Trizzy's so good at practicing that. Healing is getting a lot of this recoverable life back just by putting on the pressure. Once again, floating him out of Dragonfly. Goes for the unblockable setup once again. Takes a lively for it. Great break from Trissy as well. Oop, the big lows right there. Five seconds left. Can you heal your way out of this? I can. Peeling tries to whiff punish the down four. Honestly, I didn't even think it was gonna reach. So kudos to that. But unfortunately, Trizzy was able to recover way quickly, way more quicker than the Rage Art could get to him. Yeah, I actually don't mind the Rage Art there because Trizzy was kind of playing keep out towards the end. So maybe he would be able to snipe like a, a cheap down forward one. But yeah, Trizzy was able to clean it up at the end there, trying to save this game. But it's looking tough right now. Ooh, the Great Wall left actually whiffs there. Ooh. Peeling tries to go for something cheeky and dies for it here. Oh, got the shadows. Wonder if they tried to get to the wall spot again. This is being an octagon stage on this side or on this one. So maybe would have been able to get another combo out of there or maybe tried to stabilize it by making a splat and then taking mm -hmm. a spike. One way or another, it didn't work out and Peeling's able to tie it up. One thing you were mentioned, you said that we were on the purple stage for a really long time. I wanted to yeah. highlight that a little bit because uh, Trizzy's actually been doing that quite often. We, we've seen him quite often. I think we've seen him in three games today on stream. And every time that's happened where he's been in, on the stage descent and activated the stage, the, the floor a little bit early, he's actually not battle. gone to consume it quite yeah. quickly. I wonder if he prefers on staying on that small stage. The first stage on that is only 18 by 18, extremely small. So, yeah. you know, being able to get to the wall time and time again for Yoshi might be something he's looking forward to. I think he uses it as like his, his comeback tool, you know? Not a, I'm going to be super oppressive and kill you with this. I'm going to use this to get my, get my stuff back when I need it. Yeah, that's true. You can constantly keep that dragonfly throw as a threat, right? Yeah, exactly. Always want to make them think, should I duck here? That is a great, great uh, analysis right there. Trizzy the Rapper is doing great with his spacing. Look at the backdash sidesteps that he's using right here to stop healing from being able to get close to him. 
yeah we saw this in matches previously when we saw uh versus sophie right just playing that keep out game versus the xiao yu it's working so well this is the movement style of tekken that everybody talks about everybody says man tekken's all about movement trizzy the rapper absolutely attended that lecture and in fact he might even have been the professor yeah he's showing it off really well right now big big low parry i don't think he has the ability to get to wall here never mind he knows better than i do Ooh, the sword stab that's actually punishable believe it or not on hit you can punish that going straight through that wall and the dash jab combos what did we say about dash jabs earlier they're so useful but you have to get to the wall if you're going to use them yeah it's all about the advantage that it gives you oh tried to get that string on the back it was slightly too slow peeling turns around and be able to get a punish with the down forward one that's the trizzy classic right when you think that i'm gonna go low no in fact when trizzy doesn't do the down forward one i've seen him lose entire tournaments on it so trizzy i need to see more of that down forward one keep it tight keep it going yeah it gets another big launch here though nice combo on the back Oof. yeah plus frames keeping the control and huge amounts of chip damage you are aerial here though and now healing's gonna get a lot of this life back because of all of the hits in this combo yeah heat burst not a bad idea if yoshi's in dragonfly right uh, obviously only one or two things make it uh make it scary to do and so the opponent has to commit to those Oof. uh oh Terrible mix for Peeling, but Peeling stays on the ground and sees at staying alive. But then the down four, just as I said, Trizzy always keep doing the down four and one. Peeling says, yeah, he's going to keep doing it. Good at doing that the entire time and more times than not had the positional advantage. Yes, all the time. All the time he had the positional advantage in that last set. It was absolutely surgical and Next up, we have Shadow 20Z still on the Kazuya yeah, versus yeah. Rhythm on the Shaheen. I am so keyed up for this match. I don't know about you, man, but when I see a character get played that expertly, like I saw Keske over the weekend, it makes me want to play the character. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling Shadow right now. But this is, yeah, as we said before, if you're just joining us, this isn't a new thing for Shadow. It might be a, a, a little bit rare, but he has played the Kazuya quite often, not only in this game, but also in Seven. Oh, all those running twos. Shadow doesn't get a punish on that. 29 second perfect for rhythm you know at the end right there the running two actually does a lot of chip damage but since shadow was in rage he took a lot less chip damage you take 75 percent less chip damage in rage so very interesting little thing to note right there that shadow wasn't really worried about taking chip damage in that last game but already has taken 50 percent off of rhythm's life yeah what are these electrics in neutral asking for rhythm to run into that space laps but shadow just ready to retaliate Ooh. using the backdash so well but he's like ah rhythm knows when shadow 20 he needs to come in two times in a row not three times i expected it a third time i swear he's Ooh. known for doing that that's the rhythm special it really is <laughs> dude it's, it's such a scary mix when both the high and the mid give you so much damage does he able to take it yes he has enough life to take it Shadow 20Z saying, Lord, I've seen what Rage Arts have done for others. <laughs> Please do the same for me. Right time, right moment. Shadow's able to tie it up. Yeah, you're seeing, and if you see those electrics in neutral, you're thinking, why is he just whiffing a move so far out? The electrics recover so quickly that sometimes opponents think that, oh, I can get a whiff punish in really quickly. And when you get the electric that you recover so fast, you actually get a punish on them. Mm -hmm. Yes, 100% bait worthy. 
and you got to be really careful with your options that you want to use. Shadow 20Z uses the demon paw to get in, and Rhythm says, thank you, I was chasing you down, and now you just let me go and run my offense on you. I run my slide, I get my mix, I get my kill. Oh, missed the electric punish there. Unfortunate, but very common. That's the risk you play when you play Mishima's. Demon paw, patch your side fist, trying to move. Statue kick catches you trying to move. Running two. Man, Rhythm is ready for it. He's like, you know, I know my back was to the wall, but uh, how about a little bit of taste of your own medicine? Woo! Oh my god, Rhythm, just the aggression, the jabs, the down forward ones, the aggression all the way through to the wall and spent everything in order to make it happen. Takes the first game. I just want to say that was the finish that out. He had defeated, depleted 100% of Shadow's life in 10 in-game seconds. I just yeah. look back at the clip of it. 10 seconds is the amount of time that it took. You know, really think about it. Combos might be unoptimal. You just keep I don't hits. disagree with that. You just keep I cannot hits, tell you how much I agree with that. <laughs> This is one of the things. Okay, so Xiao Yu's heat smash leaves it so that you're still standing. And I'm like, this is the most broken thing because you still have to take standing mix afterwards. Stand up is one of the harder things. And that's what makes Zafina so strong. You continue standing. She doesn't have a lot of knockdowns. You continue standing after a lot of her stuff. So maybe that's what Shadow 20Z is going for here. But uh, gonna have to go for it after getting up off the ground from this huge combo. Oh, the Shaheen privilege, being able to use the wall blast, but keep the corner because of the side switch tornado. Oof. A lot Ugh. of damage for this. And the low wall slump hit as well. Continue to put on the plus frames. And Shadow Whoa. 20Z just could not get out of there. That was 30 seconds of me not being able to play the game. What the heck? <laughs> Shaheen can be very strong if used properly, which I believe Rhythm has. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the top players are talking about this character being kind of a sleeper pick, underrated how good he is. And, and you know, just been getting little bits and pieces on top of how strong he already was. Rhythm is showing off this character so expertly well, and even just going for the hop kicks at round start time and time again. All right, Shadow, this is your opportunity. It's always Shadow time. You see him down two rounds, but that is not a reason to count him out. I step. Mentioning all the characters before that had great sidesteps, Safina is also another one with great movement. What I say, 23 second perfect right there. Shadow 20Z is never out of it. Now applying the mix, finally being able to get the game started with Zafina. And it's looking really good once they get the Ooh. opportunity. Steppy, Ducky. Oh. That's a double perfect. Two in a row. Are you gonna reverse? No, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, like that reverse God match. That would have been insane. Shadow 20 z using the back dash so well, knowing exactly when to use those wall running moves, which Zafina has so many strong ones of. Lost frames. All players really thinking about that range two, range three area. Zafina's really good in that range. Wall action, get some space behind him, and Freedom oh. doing so well. The side steps left, switching it up. Shadow's back against the wall. Yep, locking Shadow down and Rhythm trying to get them so that Shadow's back is to that wall, but not gonna happen. Shadow 20Z breaks the throw and is basically in risk of getting hit by this slide. And it does. Rhythm defeats Liquid Shadow 20Z with a 2-0 bracket on top of which, right? And then a lot of the times when you see the some of the up and coming players kind of burn out right before top eight, no matter how good they are, the stamina that's required to get this far is something. And that's why, you know, these guys end up being on top and you see the names time and time again. These guys have, you know, tested their metal time and time again, worked on it, gotten that stamina necessary. And now they're here, Trizzy versus Joe Crush.
Yeah, speaking of testing their metal, Joe Crush is certainly trying to put the pedal to the metal here. This is the second Yoshimitsu that he has to play in top eight and already the spirit of the way is coming away. I gotta tell you, I know this matchup quite intrinsically. Trizzy has the options to use those helicopter kicks way better in this matchup because he cannot get floated for the quick option by Joe Crush in order to get a combo. So you are risking way more by retaliating against the Dragonfly stance versus Yoshimitsu as a Jack player. Luckily though, Joe Crush very steeled in this matchup as he plays it quite often. A lot of Yoshimitsu players in his region. And already he's got lots of good stuff going on in this game and in just this round. 50% already off of Trizzy. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the big body characters definitely have deficiencies in, in some places that other characters don't. And guys like Joe Crush just have learned how to navigate around those so well, right? So even yeah, if you say, like, like, you know, these these stances and these transitions are really difficult for these characters to deal with, it's like Joe Crush still gets to this point in these brackets despite that. Yeah, he used the power crush in the middle of that string because he knows that string so well. He knows that basically the option select versus that guard break in the neutral is that you just always do an armor move and that'll get you out of getting armor broken. Trizzy the Rapper gets this great heat dash combo here and Joe Crush has got his back to the wall. Big break though afterwards. Ooh, the wall splat actually giving Trizzy more time, but the wake up from Joe Crush is what won. Oh my oh! God, Trizzy. He tried to move and sidestep to get Flash, I think. And still all the same, after killing yourself, you still get the round. You know what? Using an unblockable that destroys your own health and winning the round, name a more iconic duo. Oh my god. Guy said, "All right, Joe Crush. I know you're too up and you're feeling nice. I'll give you a handicap. Here you go. Sixty life, just for you." That one's going in the recap. I tell you Ooh. what, there's the electric mech Godfist doing a lot of work right there, and Trizzy the Rapper is gonna do a lot of work with this combo, punishing the Seed Planet. Oh, kind of a weird sidewall situation. So getting one of those. KYSG combos, but mm -hmm. finishes it towards the end. Seed Planner. Oh, it just gets into Connect. Joker flips the pressure back onto Trizzy and able to take the first game. Trizzy and Joe Crush have played a lot of tournament sets together. Some of them in grand finals, winners finals, losers finals of Tampa Never Sleeps. And I think that these guys know each other's playstyles extremely well. I got to think that Trizzy's play style in this set so far has been very i'm not saying dragonfly stance focused but the threat of dragonfly stance is the always there because of how yeah. strong it is and he always is threatening with it but specifically in this set versus joe crush i feel it oh down four two Joker is just the type of player to kind of squirm out of these plus frame situations. He definitely wants to challenge you and make you think that those plus frames aren't as valuable as they are. Slipping in those those uh, frame traps for Trizzy is going to be a good idea as he takes the first round. Yeah. Yeah, damned if you do and damned if you don't. If he didn't, if he got hit by the mid at the wall, he would have wall splat and died. And if you don't duck, you get hit by the Spirited Away. Very tough situation. Joe Crush is able to stop Drizzy from getting all that wall advantage on him this time, though. Look at all of this extra sequence that we've got going on here. Joe Crush could not get the Heat Dash, though. And lucky for Trizzy. Ooh, maybe a little unlucky for Trizzy, eh, Sam? I think he actually took the damage when he Heat Bursted. Mm. And uh, I think that definitely didn't give him a lot of life to work with towards the end. It didn't look like it, but I could be. I'm going to clip it and let you know later. But Tracy starting off strong again in the second round here. Joker just fought off the wall really well, and that's going to do it there. The extra space gained from the heat engager. Yeah, this is one of the things that Joe Crush is well known for. He does not care if his back is to a wall. That is not something that worries him one bit. Ooh, Trizzy tries to go for the raw dragonfly, and Joe Crush has got those reactions. Yeah, 
yeah, gets a launch here. Big deal, not only because he's able to get this damage, but recover so much life from this combo alone. Actually takes the lead from it. <sighs> wow, he really did raw gamma into the mech god fist right here. That was nuts. Ugh. And after he took the life lead, Joe Crush took it right back, putting himself at set point. On the wall. Very risky situation here for Joe Crush. Nice. He just let it rip. Because Trizzy canceled it. Oh no. Broke through the heat burst. Tried to power crush as well. A little bit too late. Oh, you are donezo, my friend. No! That's going to be oh. not only oh. over 50 damage for the oh heat smash God, itself, I... then the 10 damage on the top oh. of the wall burst, then the rest of this combo. You already know what it is. My blood! Give me back my blood! Oh, my God! No! Not like this! I lost from 10 frames! Reboot as well. Cuddle Core versus Rhythm coming up for you on the Ortiz farm. We are in the Espresso Nation here trying to wake you up. Don't you dare go to sleep here. 11.52 p.m. or not. Let's run it. This is going to be a banger. Trying to round out this bracket for y'all. Nothing but heavy hitters left. Nothing but the best here at Tampa Never Sleeps. Rhythm looking so good. It has to take out another one of Midwest's best. Ooh. Okay. Rhythm doing some really good work with the sidestep here. Kotal Core uses the power crush and the high risk low, Ooh. but gets themselves out of trouble. Going for the low again. Yeah, power or Heapers trying to just deal through it. The slide still hits. The boost get up gets away from the low. And one more hit's gonna do it. Rhythm takes the first round. That was a wild sequence right there. They were so nuanced in all of that. Kotakor using the unique getup, Rhythm going and just waiting Ooh. in to get that basically instant full crouch down too. That was nasty. Oh man, we're lucky that he doesn't have the ability to go through the wall after that guard break. Uh, you're so afraid with the breakable behind you, you don't wanna die. But it's you're taking so much damage from guard break after guard break after guard break after guard break. <laughs> oh my god! It's it's very very oppressive, oh. and what what more can we say? It's extremely difficult to deal with that because you get the guard break, and then you're guaranteed to get another chance at doing the guard break, and it's just. It loops and it loops and it loops and it's it's so strong. I gotta wonder, you know, what could they do? They could maybe revert a change from that. I'm not saying that this needs to be toned down, but I will say that those last two rounds were characterized by just that. The momentum swung considerably because of that. Oh, I mean, I'll say it. I think it needs to take more heat. I think it needs I agree to, with you, that. You, you need to. I, I don't mind giving him a very strong tool like that once he gets in the heat, but he should probably like not get as many of them. I think three is maybe too much. Yeah, it does take one third of the heat gauge. You're 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 definitely right on the exact numbers of that. Kotokor says, you know what? I like to use strong heat as well. Yeah. And I think that Alyssa's heat was very strong, but Claudio, her Claudio game has been on point. So let's see if Rhythm has the tools to deal with that. Yeah, one of the things I love about our Tekken scene, especially, you know, the top players like Junya and Shadow and Cuddle is that they roll deep together, right? And they've actually learned all of each other's characters. <laughs> so don't, it's not surprising to have, see Cuddle have a Claudio, not only because she's played it before, but also mm. because Shadow is one of her, one of her consistent training partners. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Rhythm tried to jump over. I think that was an orbital attempt right there, but Kotokor did not go low to get out of that corner. Did not need to. Yeah, this character is so good to play that little pick style. You just take little bits of damage here and there, and as soon as you feel like you have an opportunity, boom, the down back, one plus two, <laughs> eats you for hella damage. There's yeah, one right there. Yep, exactly. 
Oh, tries to go for Beyblade. Rhythm immediately comes back. A lot of people are like, oh, that thing is safe. I'm not going to immediately press afterwards. And Rhythm's like, no, I had heat. Why not? <laughs> oh, staying on the ground? Switching up the situation. Rhythm now having his back towards the wall, but that was a great block from Cuddle. Rhythm doesn't go to the slides all that often. That was just a great read. I step four. Oh, pressing, trying to move there when I am in heat and I do a wall standing one and you don't think I'm gonna do wall standing one, two to splat you on the wall and kill you. I don't know what made you think that that wasn't gonna happen. Mentioning before, strings are a risk. Whoa, the damn that was on the back. It's already 50% gone into a flow combo. Keep out jab is doing work for rhythm here. And yo, he runs up, gets the sneak cancel into the down two, and gets Kotakor on that wall. Oh, power crush through the down back. We'll bust two. That's definitely a way to deal with that one. Rhythm ties it the up. opponent the fastest. All right, here we go. Back to it. Kotokor lives to die another day. Never mind. I'm going to backdash, hop kick you. All that momentum that you had before is gone. And Rhythm now has to play a very different game than he was playing. And Cuddle starting off really strong. Has Starburst as well. Gonna use the Heat Burst. Blow and do everything that he does in the one plus two. And we are tying up the games one to one. Wow. So it's really interesting. So those moves that you were talking about, they got used there, right? <laughs> yeah. Forward, forward, four, it counter hit. And then afterwards, she went and dashed up again. And instead of dashing up into button, she dashed up into power crush. And and Rhythm was definitely 100% trying to get like a float off of it. But Cuddlecore saw that one coming a mile away. It was like she was listening to the commentary and was like, oh, yeah, you're right. I should totally kill him for trying to do this keep out jab. I'd like to give myself credit, but Cuddle's one of the smartest among us. I, I you're definitely right. think she, she came up with that on her own. As we get into this one, third game going into one of my favorite stages because there's just so much fun to play on the octagon stage. And uh, Claudio's, Claudio's uh, combos in this game, in this version 105, heavily buffed. Now they go corner to corner. And so it's really good for him to get these like smaller wall stages. Ducky, Cuddle Core getting hit by that big wall running two right there. We're gonna go over to the wall. Can we see something extra? Ooh, the flip over Okizeme. No guaranteed stuff because Cuddle Core was on the ground. on the low still has a little bit of life to recover on the Ooh. side of cuddle and the move that you know and love the down back one plus two getting a big hit there cuddle core using the god move down four three fantastic attack delayable big mix up oh my no. rhythm bro i swear i saw a button i swear <laughs> i saw a cuddle core press there you and Rhythm, but not Caldo Core. Takes the first round. Ooh, running two. One more time. Wow, Press is on the plus frames there. We're playing that very fundamental small tech and Shaheen game. One of the things that Shaheen does best, but Caldo Core says, no, 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 no. We're playing the Claudio game. And Rhythm says, ah, no. Mom says it's my turn to pick the game. Cuddles back against the wall. Was back against the wall was three seconds ago, and then turns it all the way around. Rhythm does well to fight off the ties up the round count here. That's a 34 second perfect. That's a that's a really long perfect. 34 seconds and you didn't get hit. Sheesh. How many times have we said that? As a part of the, uh, just the defense on these guys is so yeah. Wow, she was so off axis and still got hit. Oh, tried to catch Rhythm into doing a follow-up, but Rhythm still had the correct option. Yes, instant running two into the heat smash. Yeah, not expect the cuddle is definitely not the one to immediately go into a heat smash there. Caught Rhythm and I off guard. Very interesting that Cuddlecore went for those plus frames into a low. Pretty predictable. Oh. 
as Rhythm thought as well. And now Rhythm is on set point to move forward in loser's side. He makes it to the end there. So tough to deal with. Rhythm putting himself in the same position as game two. Big counter hit. Big ol' down Ooh. back to one. Oh no. <gasps> That's gonna do it. Oh, not quite. Sam. One more chance. It's the positioning to do it at. Rhythm, Side get some space. Forward. Oh no. That is such a tough string to deal with. It's a punishment mix. Even yeah. talking about that. <laughs> we're so talking funny. about the other situation. Like, this is neither here nor there, though. Next up, our winner's finals. King Ray Jr. versus Yukio East Coast Gang. Oof. This is going to be a banger. Remind you guys, this is winner's finals. So a three out of five, a.k.a. a first to three set here. We got three of them to decide a victor. Goes for the whole string. Ooh, Ukio flashes and King Ray Jr. kills him for it. <laughs> Man, did he? He never expected the best players on this character do it so close to you, the, mo the meditation stands. You never mm. expect it, and all of a sudden they get, you know, a couple hits of life back. Or she to come in. Ukio takes the first one. I, I want to talk about the numbers on Meditation Stance. We'll sure. talk about that a little bit later. Ooh, no, 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 no. You got to be careful doing that mid right there. That's a kick sabaki. Usually, Yoshimitsu players use the mid to make themselves safe and get give really pushback, but Asuka players definitely know about that one. Oh, gets the wall spot off of the sidestep move. Ooh, kind of floor break using the heat smash, which will auto break any breakable situation, whether wall or floor, if it hits that way. And King Ray Jr. using that to extend the combo and taking the or tying up the round count. Ooh. And already continuing that momentum very handily here. Oh, misses that second hit, and that is the tried and true Yoshimitsu classic. Oh, you dropped your combo at the wall. That's a damn shame. Time to go and get sword swept. Sword walks to get through this bottom stage. One of the biggest stages in Tekken, by the way, is 72 by 72 square. So you won't see the walls all that often. What? Ooh. Oh my gosh. Back one, slap you silly. One of the worst hitboxes of any move in Yoshimitsu's kit. So, so, so easy to evade. So that's what King Ray Jr. did in that situation. Look at how much health King Ray Jr. has, and he has rage. Life and rage. Oh man, and you know King Ray Jr. is thinking about using it. There it is, right there. That's definitely gonna do it right there. And eight seconds remaining. You know, he thought that he could use it to close out the round. He did. Gives him a little chance to think about his next option. Ukio is going for the low mid mix and goes with the Fabuki knee. A lot of people continue ducking in that situation. Man, Ukio is just one of those. He's that dude. I've seen a lot of that move today. Ooh, big low. Big low. Double. Oh, ducky. <laughs> Not quite a flash, but kind of looks like it. And gets a big combo off it as well. Mm. Yeah. No oh. guaranteed follow up after that. You had the ability to take the mix, but King Ray Jr. guessed on mid. Ukio thought that they were going low, and that took first game off of it. Sam, what do you think was the tale of that first game? Tell tell the people that maybe we're a little bit zonked out here. What are the analytics here? I mean, I got to give a lot of credit to King Ray there. I think he made a lot of really strong decisions in clutch situations. That sidestep move uh, in the beginning, you know, getting him out of it like a terrible situation and then he got massively the hooked battle. up with the wall splat to take the first round or second round, I should say. Um, that that stuff like that definitely when you win rounds that you're not supposed to. You're this close and level to your opponent. Those small decisions round can definitely one. be the deciding factor. But I do think that Ukyo can definitely focus around playing a little bit more of a spacing game. I think King Ray Jr. is just doing really well at getting in Ukyo's phase and constantly applying a mix-up. 
Yeah, as much as it might be seen as the opposite, Yoshimitsu actually struggles in the close range sometimes when players... Oh my god! The empty hop into wall standing three? King Ray Jr., please don't let it be. God, that was a lot. Party breaks the wall too. Oh, cancel? Are you gonna expect that that close? In front of your face? Absolutely not. Oop. We sweeping. Yeah, the double low and in no sword stance, the double low is even more oppressive. I love the double low there. King Ray Jr. has gone to the power crush Ooh. time and time again as their choice of heat engage or dash. The double low would have blown that up and it got hit, hit anyway, so it'll work out. Windmill, such a great tool when your opponent is in that last throes of life. You know they want to tech roll, you know where they want to get up. A lot of plus frames because of the wall crush property. Ooh. Yo! Oh, hello! <laughs> Did he cancel it? No, no. He must have been trying to hold back or something and accidentally got back. That, that is a tragedy. Luckily, though, Ukio gets the sword sweep and a great wall splat. Jeez, I have not seen a sword sweep get that much damage. Oh! Took a huge hit, and I that might be it. It's gonna be close. Oh, it is enough indeed. And King Ray Jr. Oh, pulls it back at the last second. It was kind of a scary situation towards the end. He didn't count his wall hits between the breakable and the wall afterwards. And Ukio is almost able to steal that round, but King Ray Jr. with the Rage Art last second. King Rage Art Jr., we've said it before, he's earned that name time and time again. And he's earned the name of a combo optimist as well. Who, oh, man, Ukio spending a lot of that very small amount of health that he had left to be able to try to get out of the situation. But King Ray Jr. just realigned and was able to kill. I could use heat smash there towards the end. Asuka's heat smash hits really low, so good in those yeah. run-in situations if they get an unnecessary or unexpected blow splat. Mm, through that wall. King Ray Jr. using the funeral palm to get the tornado, trying to put Ukio into that coffin and get up a two game streak. But Ukio spending a lot of those plus frames, getting the wall crush and continuing the Kincho stance. Great duck from King Ray Jr., but the pressure still continues for Ukio. Jr. baits out nothing from Ukio. You have 20 seconds. It is your job to try to kill me. Ah, King Ray Jr. says, mm, you played yourself. Oh, couldn't get a pick up with a three ring. Quite possible most of the time if it hits out in the air, but not mm -hmm. that time. Unfortunate, but Ukiyo stays composed. Ooh, that was a great timing read for the kneecap. Full crouch down forward four into this saucy extra damage combo at the wall. But King Ray Jr. immediately gets the momentum back. Oh, rolls away from that mix entirely. Don't want to deal with it at all. Don't mind taking a couple of damage hits just to be able to be back into the space. Ukiyo takes three pumps of the meditation stance. Pretty much optimal amount of pumps that you want. Again, we'll talk about exactly the numbers on that later. Ukiyo in the life lead, but tries to step and get a delayed action. But King Ray Jr. just uses the full crouch down forward to get the guaranteed into huge damage. Oh, I great round end situation from King Ray Jr. there. Plus frames on a plus frames and take it. Want to add the little bit of fact that King Ray Jr. actually delayed a little bit after the running move because he saw it go slightly off axis and he didn't want to put a button off to whiff and lose all of that pressure. So delayed it for half a second, saw himself realign and then went for the heat smash afterwards to get the extra plus frames. So just stacking it on, playing safe, making sure he's playing uh, calm and composed first, not just mashing all of his strings together and uh, assessing the situation perfectly. That's two up for King Ray Jr. By the way, I want to mention why Ukio died there was because King Ray Jr. got the crouch cancel down forward two, a near frame perfect attack after the counter hit down forward two from full crouch in that last set. That was absolutely great. I almost missed it right there. 
And uh, that is something that is what we can see from these high level competitors at Tampa Never Sleep. King Ray Jr. using the armor move to break through that string and already putting Ukio with their back to the wall for the millionth time in this set <laughs> and just continuing that pressure. What? You're cackling over here. You try, you're, you're laughing at the the downfall of my Manji <laughs> brother here. I don't know if I can really stand that. I don't know if I can put up with that. Oh man, I just, just King Ray Jr. will never say no to stealing some plus frames, man. Just as soon as he gives you an opportunity, he finds the right timing for a duck, the right time to spend a heat smash. Whatever it is, he just wants to take pressure back from you. Ukiyo this time, though, starting off really, really strong. Yeah, continues it going with the unlockable. Gonna take that first round, or uh, ties up the round, kind of. Use the down 2-1 to be able to wall splat there. Very rarely used move from a lot of the Yoshimitsu squad. Great option. King Ray Jr. is moving small, small slides up to the right to get away from the Kincho stance. Oh, you tried to duck. You know, unfortunately, that's unblockable. Oh, and this one too. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, Ukyo though, good presence of mind from him as well. Realized the sidewall might mess up the situation. Went for a little jab and took all those frames to open instead. Ooh, just because the first hit of the Heat Smash whiff does not mean that the second hit is going to whiff because the second hit is much longer, uh, much longer range. Yo, doing really well to fight off the wall blast, but got realigned for it, and King Ray Jr. getting hooked up for this wall splat. Ducking <laughs> again? Oh man, I think Ukio has the opportunity to bring towards the wall right here, and he does. Doesn't get the perfect wall combo though. Yeah, this when you're, you're perfect. He got it again, <laughs> dude. He's, That's the he's got frame the perfect stuff again. I have seen him attempt that many times in bracket, but I've never seen him so consistent. He's doing it time and time again. You, you can't take that risk against this character. Those counter hits are gonna hurt. I gotta say this, I think King Ray Jr. deserves this dub if he ends up getting it right here. But Ukio says, I don't care, deserve or not. He's trying for some setups, he's trying for some big turn stealing pools, and I don't know if it's gonna work out for him. He does with the back turn, yeah, oh, stays on the ground, avoids the big hit on the ground. There's a chance for Ukio here. Lost frames. No, just go for low. Wow. And had it ready. Turned around and got the hit right when he went behind him. And King Ray. We have seen quite a few times, or at least they have seen quite a few times, because <laughs> this is a sibling rivalry right here. Joe Crush versus his brother, Mark, aka Rhythm. Let's see who's going to move on to losers finals to fight Ukio. You think they should just, like, take this offline? I know they stream, so like they could just capture the PS5. Yeah, I'm not sure if they live <laughs> together anymore. I know that Rhythm is involved in the in the military, or at least was involved mm. in the military. So I'm not sure if they live together anymore. And Joe is currently in Florida right now, still visiting from CEO. Neither here nor there, though. Nice step from Rhythm. He's really doing great at getting Joe into this corner. But Joe says, I do not care if I'm in the corner. You are the one that is losing life here. Switch throw puts him in a really bad situation. Nice roll away from Joe Crush and Rhythm finishes the string to take the first round. About to say as well, by the way, you might see some weird stuff in this set, right? When you're playing brother versus brother, playing against somebody who knows you so intimately, you might have to pull up some stuff you haven't even thought about. Yeah, 100%. You gotta keep some of the scrolls away. You know, gotta hide it in the back part of the closet where nobody ever looks. Oh my gosh, two of them things. Is he gonna do a third? Nah, no, no, no. Dude, I swear, for weeks I've been seeing Rhythm do three in a row, and now he's <laughs> just decided to do two in a row so many times and be like, haha, gotcha. I'm playing the long game. <laughs> yeah, using his own uh, using his own thing against himself is, is pretty cool. It's he pretty got cool. it! That's the oh. just frame block. You can only do that just frame. Man, these guys are locked in. That's, I don't remember the last time I've seen that. That's so cool. Oh, trying to get the bag, but it realigns. Ooh. 
hug him. Gonna go through there. Electric Mech Godfist? <laughs> yes, sir. Gonna go to a wall as well. Mm, not quite. Yeah, try to get the wall there, but the Oki all the same. Still in a really bad position. Try to throw for side switch. Oh, try it one more time. Oh, a little bit too far. Great back dashing from Joe Crush. It wins him the round. Mm. This is some high octane stuff we have right here. You can see Joe Crush is steaming on that side. Oh. Just speaking of the steam, the armor move getting beat out. Rhythm whiffs, and Joe Crush doesn't get the wall standing one, but he does get this float. Yeah, wall spot just enough to get the uh, tornado. Gets to the wall too. Great combo here with a double side spot situation. Okay, four three. Goes for the dirty bubble, gets punished afterwards from the string. Oh. <laughs> get out of here. With the get death. out of my space. Mom says that you're not allowed to touch me like that. The wall standing one, man. That was crazy. Just perfect time. And that's what I'm saying, man. You might see some things that you don't normally see, but in that situation, it's exactly the right read. Facing so important in this matchup. Joe Crush trying to interrupt. Rhythm letting them know that you don't have the ability. Overkill throw. Well, oh, doesn't break as well. Bad situation to be in. Rhythm stays on the ground to save his life. He first cannot kill in this situation. Rhythm uses the down jab for the ability to turn steel. Joe with their back to the wall. The slide <gasps> into another slide. What a clutch moment from Rhythm. Oh, with a pixel of health left because he versus don't kill anymore. Rhythm was able to close out the first game. I should remind you guys, by the way, he only needs one more. This is a loser semis. So it is a first to two set. Mm -hmm. Man, I wish. OK, so I do the weekly recaps and I try to tell everybody about some of the big things that happened. I wish that I could just share every single one of these matches with everybody. Everything is a highlight. The <laughs> whole tournament has just been bangers. I, I've been thinking the same thing because I actually opened up a notepad on the side here because of how many things I've forgotten to talk about. Because these yeah. guys just play so well. I want to mention all of the cool things that they're doing. Okay. <laughs> Round start down for it too. No thank you though. Rhythm takes a little punish but then gets a slow period afterwards. Ooh, well standing 2 1. Guaranteed follow up afterwards. C planner. Joe Crush getting sidestepped yet again. Ooh, Rhythm missed the charge on the guard crush. He said, that's okay, I was saving that one for later. Only does one that time. Joe Crush blocks the running two for his life as well. Yeah, that's that was a critical block. The running two would have been big damage, wall splat into a really bad situation afterwards at the minimum. Ooh, windmills, he will do the down jab, which is the option select for that situation. Guarantees that you punish or don't get hit by the high. Joe Crush, not perturbed though, still has quite the life lead on Rhythm. I'm for the 4 4 3 there, making a, a big read, maybe on a duck jab or something like that. Oh, yeah. the 10 framer. Ooh, that's a good idea, you know, because it's aerial. I didn't think about that. Smart. Ooh. Whiffing Rhythm using their sidestep so well. Great break. No guarantee follow up after that, but they did get this hit grab, which destroys the recoverable life. Went a little hit on the ground there. Both players have understand each other's Oki so well. They've been mixing up the how long they've been staying on the floor. Rhythm had a great throw on the end of that. He just knows when the parry is coming. <laughs> Fox out, you're my man, dude. You, you do the same things that I do when I play you're, at home. <laughs> bro, we're we're here because we love this game and we get to show that we love this game. Rare. Again, Joe Crush trying to get the throw, trying to get another one. Rhythm says, nah, get off of me. A string rip. 
takes a little bit of a punish there. Oh, actually, Helding got a great low parry. Uh-uh. Goes for Oki that time. Oh, the guard crush and easy peasy finish for Joe Crush. Able to tie up the game count. I just want to talk about the insane wall sequence that we saw right there. Yeah. Full crouch down back 1-1. One, one. Just full crouch down back 1. Full crouch down forward 4. Full crouch, wall, excuse me, wall standing 3 into gamma stance into the heat smash. It is a ridiculous amount of pressure when you have Joe Crush in your face. Not yeah. only that, but also he was in heat. Yeah, it's it's that's a really difficult sequence to deal with, and I'm I'm not exactly sure how to do it myself at the moment right now because honestly, Joe Crush is kind of the only Jack player that I've seen do it, and that's kind of Joe Crush's style. Like he's made a Jack of his own. You can only call it Joe Crush's Jack. Yes, well, that's true, but there's uh, been a lot of people that have been inspired by him. Sheesh. Speaking of being inspired, this has inspired me to maybe play Shaheen, because look at the range of that hop kick. Yeah, I would say normally uh, in, in previous games, Jack kind of really likes infinite stages because he just gets to backdash on a lot of situations, mm -hmm. doesn't have to worry about uh, the space behind him. But in this game, he's not that much of a character, that same character anymore. So I don't think he likes it as much. And secondarily, Shaheen, it doesn't mind these stages because he has 4-4-3. Four, four, he has a move that kind of stabilizes all combos and gives him the same OP over and over again. So it gives him great mix-up potential. We had so many crazy interactions during that. The hop kick's doing a lot of work. Oh, the empty jump was no bueno. Luckily, Joe Crush didn't float rhythm. And another one. Joe Crush gets sent over there, but the wall standing three combo not working out for rhythm. Yeah, it's a tough ass combo. So you, you'll see him drop it every now and then, but he, he's pulled out of them quite often. That's too straight. I was about to say, Riddle might be doing all of his damage coming from hop kicks. These whiff punishes are nuts. He's at set point, maybe another one to take him home. Doesn't go for a heat burst. Doesn't even try to go in the heat at all. Joe Crush is mogging, starting up with those Gamma Howl transitions and immediately going for these very strong moves that he gets out of oh. heat. Ooh, the dirty bubble. Every villain is lemons. Get him, Joe. <laughs> Oki situation. No, let's it rip on the end screen. There's a lot of white life to recover, though and not gonna get to get any of it back power crushes through and joe crush finally puts himself on the board in this third game but he needs two more another dirty bubble oh none of that i think not i'm gonna use my armor joe crush has talked at a hand my man to pull out the four two it's scary to do that in that many <laughs> plus frames Rhythm has plenty of heat, uses it to get close to Joe and close the gap. Joe says, fine, I want to be close to you anyway. Oh, I tried to finish it, but the low is going to do it once again. Joe Crush takes two rounds back and we're now at set point. It is a first to two. Ooh, counter hit throw and Joe still breaks it. Ooh, the cross chop. Down jab, great option. Whenever Jack is in gamma transitions, uh, down jabs are really good options. Uh, asterisk. Double, not triple. I'm telling you, he just does the double. He's, he's double rid him now. Triple rid him is dead. Until everybody expects it, then he'll come back alive. Mm -hmm. The meta has changed. Trying to get the timing catch here. I have seen so many people not be able to punish that dirty bubble. It's negative 13, but the block stun on it is very, very short. Joe Crush getting caught by the keep out jab, trying to come in. That was 13 frame punishable as well. Can Rhythm finish it out? He does finish the string, and that right there will do the thing. He key charges. You know, there's 33 characters in the game. There can't be representation everywhere in the world, but I'm super glad that we get to see all of this Yoshimitsu in here. Losers finals, Rhythm versus is NYC Tekken's Yukio. Let's get it. Let's see how
how this one goes along. Oh, just going in the Dragonfly raw like that. And he says, no, thank you. I don't want to deal with this mix. I foresee us not breaking the floor for quite some time here on this stage. Ooh, Ukio letting them know. Oh, by the way, that move, flash launch punishable. Thank you for very much for not doing your homework. Lost him for their catching as he's getting up, gets the heat smash as well. And great stays put just a second longer than Rhythm expected. It gets a great whip punish. Oh, very interesting option for Rhythm to use right there. And Ukio smelled it coming a mile away. I can get a lot in that situation. Ukio will take the little hits and reset back into the middle of the space. Oof. First floor activated, or first hit activated, I should say. Yeah, that's because Yoshimitsu is in a floating state during the Indian stance. Oh, and that gave Rhythm the ability to just take the floor and spend it. Gets the back turn combo as well. Oh, no, thank you. Yoshi players having a sixth cent for when to use those flashes. Spacing is immaculate right here for Rhythm. 11 seconds remaining. Oh, can he get it done? Yeah, trying to take as much time as possible with the combo, and that's going to be it. Great selection there. Doing everything he can to eat up the timer. We did three, round, three floor breaks in one round. Yeah, see what this last one favors being on this stage. It's Two by 72, huge stage. Nice whiff punish right there by Ukio. Ooh, Rhythm almost destroyed Ukio from the back. Nice sidestep, but Ukio doesn't get a great punish on it. Let's take plus turns back after that throw break situation. More. Oh, mm. great sidestep hop kick. I, I told you a lot of his great tools have some issues tracking, but Unfortunately, because Rhythm was off axis due to the sidestep that got him that launch in the first place, he needed a different combo to be able to keep it up, and Yukio took advantage of that. Yeah. It's definitely one of the parts of Tekken, the little extra expert stuff. Just different levels of off axis off axisness can change the way that you have to do the combo. Mm, he was trying to go for a wall standing three there. I am absolutely sure of it. Damn, Yukio. Pop off here with his float combo. So again, he's going for that quite a bit, I should say. The yeah, up forward one. Yeah, because Yukio's doing a lot of the meditation stance, which puts Yoshimitsu a little bit stationary for quite some time. Yukio finally lands a great down forward two, but again, he drops his combo. Drop combos galore in this game. Yeah, all the all action situations. Definitely creating some weird moments. Oh, Ooh. counter hit. Heat engager. Oh, it goes for the running Got key. that time. Ooh, sidestep two. Very strong attack. Extremely similar to Dragonov's down two and uh, Jin's down to as well but it's locked in sidestep stance so that's why you don't see it quite as often because it's such a slow move not only does it have like 20 frame startup but also you got to do it out of a sidestep however great if you want to delay your timing and have your opponent think you were going to press something on immediate timing and maybe they thought you were going to go low and they baited or they tried to low parry remember that you could only buffer low parry for about 20 frames, about a third of a second. Else you have to basically like mash it to be able to continue low parrying. And the delay on that is extremely useful. Sheesh, immediately the hop kick from Yukio's opponent. I don't know how this man constantly gets round star hop kicks like this, but he's he's got it locked. Well, block guard, that's the second one I should say. Great read. Rhythm's been but getting away with a lot of those. Rhythm was floated. If he wasn't floated, Yukio would have got entire combo, but he's considered aerial during the recovery of that, which made it even harder for Yukio to get anything. 
low and blockable once again. Nice carry to the wall. I'm going to spend the heat first. It's a little bit of extra damage and puts him face down. What a conversion off the wake up three. Honestly, just glad you got anything. Rhythm has Ukio's back to the breakable balcony. Oh, side switch. Take that wall pressure from you. Thank you very much. Rhythm is definitely showing that he will press after the Dragonfly 4. No, no, there will be no suicide here today. Ukio's <laughs> like, yeah, no, I was being tricksy. Able to clean it up there, ties it up 1-1. One one. Definitely a hefty point here for Ukio. Doesn't want to go down 2. Ooh, Kincho Perry. Okay, you're a little bit plus after Kincho Perry. Not super, though. Rhythm has not yet thrown the slide. Says he wants to do while standing one and a sidestep down for two. A classic in the Shaheen playbook. Uh, weird situation afterwards. I think maybe Rhythm got stuck doing a move and just wanted to stay put afterwards. Didn't want to whip something, not get into combo. The mental stack that Ukio is putting on right now is massive, but Rhythm says, you know what? It's fine. I'm just going to keep running my offense. Oh, you went into sneak stance, and if you did anything out of the sneak stance that wasn't immediate timing, you got killed for it because Yoshimitsu is so close to you in that situation. You moved into the opponent. Your collision spheres actually disappear in those situations, and that's what got you flashed and killed. Rhythm trying to high up the game count here. Try for that flash. Trying to see a response from Rhythm there. Ooh, from the back turn. Ukio spins. So he took five extra damage because he thought he could get out of something that he couldn't. He'll be able to recover some health if he gets the opportunity. That's the opportunity right there. It starts off with a big flash. He chooses not to go for the guard break setup and take his health elsewhere and get the wall. Got a lot of life recovered, so felt very comfortable and spinning out of a bad situation. Ukiya ties up the game count one to one. The spin. If hey, have you ever been in the old arcades and they have those roulette wheels that are totally not Wheel of Fortune wheels, but oh, totally yeah, look yeah, like yeah. Wheel of Fortune wheels? Yeah. wheels. And they and they're called spin to win yep. and they just like had that audio cue that right there is the name of the game Get ready for the next battle. <laughs> it's just it's for it, it's a uh, it's never been a better tool than in this game because of the ability to recover the health back and not just just the great life as in general but i mean like all of the recover of health tools that this character has got spending like that doesn't feel so bad anymore Huge amounts of extra damage that you get from that. And a heal. Speaking of heals, Rhythm gets a heal from this heat engager, but Ukio immediately takes it away. Slide number one. No, 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 no. I'm going mid. Yeah. So I'm staying put on the floor. Ukio transitioning into stance. It takes the first round. Been to win. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Grassy. Trying oh. to do something when I'm only negative four. Wait, that's a good number for Yoshimitsu. Nice. Guaranteed follow up. No, he chooses to just run up on him. That's the burst here. Over to the uh, other uh, side of the screen. Uh. Is there another breakable wall over there? Oh man, he was so off axis he couldn't get anything from it. Three Kincho fours in a row is absolutely insane. They're all duckable. There's the avoiding the puddle. Hey, I swear Ukiyo's used every single move in the move list outside of the other 20 unblockables that Yoshi has. And no, that's not an exaggeration in case you're wondering. I mean, you're, you're really seeing the sampler here. Just yeah. a little bit of everything. It's like a golden corral out here. Shish. Frame. Oh my god, you did hot me at plus five? <laughs> what what are plus friends? I don't un understand it's, that idea. What a Yoshi know. player mentality. 
Yo. plus frames? <laughs> Your plus frames and my plus frames are two different things, brother. Yo is showing how strong that Yoshimitsu can be in this matchup. Whenever you heat dash, honestly, whenever you heat dash versus Yoshimitsu, you run the risk yeah. at, at getting flashed if you're not being super frame tight. You know, you could not get flashed by Yoshimitsu if you had jabbed right there, or you could have back dashed. Hey, remember, <sighs> how do you beat Yoshimitsu? You back dash. It's, it's, it's a battle. tough thing to stick into your head. Even in general, you're just like, I'm ne I'm negative four, right? Which usually for most times is like, okay, I just have to deal with like probably a low mix, you know, down forward one option is opened up because of the negative four. And what versus this character, you gotta worry about a whole other thing. Yes, mental stack is insane. I was just talking to my friend Chung about this, <laughs> that like, I feel like Yoshimitsu has been extremely strong character, specifically in long sets. And that's where we are. We're in losers finals. This is the first of three sets. So oh. it makes it so much more difficult. Oh my gosh, the mix up is nasty. Ukio taking that first round with a wall splat from the dragonfly stance. We're saying the confidence that Rhythm was playing with earlier. It feels like it's all transitioned over to Ukio. And I don't think there's anything scarier in Tekken 8 than a Yoshimitsu player with some confidence to do anything and everything. That's another thing I was talking to my homie about the other day. Confidence will make you play better, and absolutely, these are some confident players here. Oh, oh. sidewall messing up all of these combos, but Ukyo keeps the pressure going. Ooh, Dragonfly stance there is very interesting. I'm loving what I see here. Ukyo using that full crouch sweep oppressively. Rhythm almost got the wall standing too right there, but was just too far away. Ukio now on set point, and the floor is purple. It's a float here. Even though it's not going to be a lot of damage, you definitely want to see Rhythm taking this floor away from Ukio. Yeah. And you'll see it right there. You definitely don't want him to have this. Do it again. Nice duck. And I will say that has been a difference there. This might be the reason why Ukios have the lead on Rhythm. He's gotten that mix right more often than everybody else in the tournament. Look at this combo. Oh my God, the amount of damage. He could have heat dashed. He still has two thirds of his heat, Sam. Oh my God. Has a lot of great health though. And another unblockable sweeping low. Does get the combo finish. An opportunity. That's going to be it. The back turn sequence keeps Rhythm alive. That was 40 seconds of... Oh. Low, one more time. Oh, a classic Shaheen mix-up. Oh. Maybe accidental, but still got it to work. Slide. It's floating, though. Great whiff punish slide once again. And Rhythm is stacking these on top of each other, one after another. Oh my god. Ugh. Do it again. No, goes for the mid that time. Ukyo with the flash! Plus five means nothing to me. Ugh. Hard break. I got one of those. Uh, uh, uh. See how he wants to end this. Goes for the ground hit and hits him right when he thinks he's going to get a chance to come in. Rhythm didn't have the opportunity to make the comeback that time, and Ukyo is going to be moving on to grand finals. Winners finals three to zero. So let's see if Ukyo can get his revenge match back. But he's gonna need two in order to take this TNS 28 Tekken 8 bracket. Yes, sir. Grand finals right here. The run back from winners finals. So you can see we are gonna have the cream of the crop. Oh, oh thankfully for Ukio. Dropped the combo there and he says, you know what? Let me take advantage of that one right there. 
There we go. Kicho back 2 1 into the flea setup. Oh, you didn't want to tech roll? Dude, Ukio, you had like three other ones. You could do three of those at the wall. It's not like a super huge amount of damage, but he could have got like three of them before King Ray Jr. could be able to tech roll. No, 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 no. Just spin, baby. Yes, that's right. Exactly. Now, this right here is the Achilles heel for King Ray Jr. because spinning basically always get option select on reaction in the charged situation or non-charged situation. Really? So it's like yes. if you see, as soon as you see it being charged, you just spin? Yep. yep. Oh. Or it doesn't even have to be charged. It could be, it, it could be not charged. Ooh, speaking of which, Yukio is charged up with this heat smash, destroying the rest of King Ray Jr.'s life lead and already on the par to take the no round brown here. However, King Ray Jr. might have something to say about that. Yeah, I mean, we've seen King Ray make these comebacks before, but talking about the confidence from the previous set there, seeing how well Ukyo was playing, how tricky he was getting. You start feeling it as a Yoshimitsu player, man. It can bring out the worst in you. Ooh. Dang, I did not think King Ray Jr. was going to get hit by that string right there. Lost anyone too? Natural hit on counter hit? No, the Rage uh, Art. Uh, maybe trying to... Uh, yeah, I was like, maybe, maybe hopefully hoped that he convinced King Ray Jr. not to use it. And uh, that time just still let it rip. So great stuff. King Ray made the right read. When your opponent is going to do the Rage Art, they're going to do the Rage Art. Uh, when you think that they're gonna press, you do the rage art. That's their that's their motto. Excuse me. Yep. Great round end situation, especially using it just trying to take a round you might have lost otherwise. At best, you steal it. Oh, a yeah. lot of hits. Ooh, techieing? You do not want to tech roll versus Yoshimitsu uh -huh. here. Ukio uh -huh. hasn't really shown that he's gonna be using Oof. these flip over options at the wall like Trizzy the rapper uses a lot but yeah. he will catch you trying to tech roll he he's one of those guys that prefers to just go and get the sword sweep again instead of flipping you over i think there's a dichotomy in the yoshimitsu squad and he's certainly on that camp and he's certainly rewarded for that yeah, it's interesting to even when you get characters with schlock move sets like Yoshi, even something as simple as wall pressure and wall oki can change from player to player. Some people, uh, like me, I prefer face down situations. I think those are very valuable. And some people, like Ukio, don't. They think that they can get some better oki doing other stuff. Okay, guaranteed stuff at the end. King Ray Jr. trying to keep Ukio on the floor. Ukio gets out of there though, and he's oh. spinning. Oh, I don't think you're allowed to spin, my friend. Stand here and fight me like a man. Yeah, King Ray going to some homing options now. Oh boy, and making great reads on top of that. You said it. Definitely stopping y Ukio from getting away. Again, the three, two, gonna put themselves really close to the wall. Nebular burst, all right. Yukio, I'm telling you, he uses the whole moveset. Spin to win! No, 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 no. I disagree. He was not on that wall. What? <laughs> Bro, if this was Jin Kazama, you'd see the same thing right here, but from 10 feet further back. Dang, I can't believe Yukio hit with that power crush. That move is trash, and yet he still makes it work. Oh my god, dude, he hit him on the wall, on the left wall and broke the breakable. That was crazy. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Sheesh, how do you kick him so far away? <laughs> Running one plus two. That was a huge 13 second perfect that we saw right there. Kazama muscle is real. Oh my god, the damage this character puts out. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, you're lucky you didn't get wall burst right there. King Ray Jr. just literally running into Ukyo here. Maybe saving it here, but not gonna get to use it at all. Ukyo fights off the wall real well. What a combo. Yeah, gonna spend Ooh. it himself. 
uses the Spirited Away to get them back towards the wall as well, continuing to keep the map advantage. Again, just because the first time you make the Heat Smash whiff does not mean the second hit is going to whiff. Dude, the Spirited Away being the combo ender on Wall Blast situations, it's a unique thing that not a lot of characters get. We talked about it before with Shaheen, Yoshi's one of them. Yoshi uh, getting uh, a spacing uh. trap here and succeeding with it. Are we gonna see some flip up for Oki? Yeah, Ukiyo just doesn't like to run that. There it is, that's gonna do a lot into the meditation. Oh, into one no. hitting four? What is this? He's got some stuff I've never even seen before. Yeah, and you mentioned it before, easy peasy punish for the Rage Art that gives most of the rest of the cast a little bit of a mix up for Yoshimitsu is nice and simple punish. And that's gonna be two games up for Ukyo. Yeah, he pretty much option selected with backdash spin right there, which is something similar to what we saw Kotokore do before. She tried to do backdash, backdash sidewalk and it failed for her, but she's not playing Yoshimitsu. Great stuff. Two up now. And he's making a lot of really good decisions. I, I kind of wish uh, to see if they completed that like resplat while standing four combo. That's the dirty Round stuff that you sit in lab for oh, time and time again. You're, you're trying to super duper maximize the wall combo potential. Face down. Tried one more, but tech rolled away from it. Nope, stay it on the wall. Uh, uh, uh. Cancel the pressure once again. Round two. Fight. Oh, uh, uh. Carries the wall. Uh. Oh, goes for the spin once again. He hasn't done that quite often, actually. We've seen it maybe once or twice in the set. How many Ukiyo games have we seen? But the mix up on the. Oki, he's going deep into the bag to try to take this. Baiting again to be able to get the positioning properly. Ooh, whips the flash. Luckily does not die for it. King Ray Jr. still in a situation of control. No launch on the destabilizer low. Tragic King Ray Jr. gets away with that round. Yeah, he'll be happy to put himself on the board. Ties up the round count. Oh, the down for it too. Big loss start. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, ducking? Not what you wanted to do in that situation. Woof. One more time. Stays on the ground, though. Points the second low. Wow, the uh. throw whiffed on Ukio right there, even though King Ray Jr. had the right question, right answer, excuse me. Flat, tornado and easy cleanup with the rage art. That was Ukiyo. nasty, dude. Get you out. saw, you saw the armor starting up, right? You saw like yeah, the yeah, smoke yeah. starting up from the armor, but it was like one frame early, so that you couldn't get armor and you got counter hit launched instead. Oof. That was strong start for Mukio. Now set point. Yeah, oh. look at this saucy stuff right here. That combo is harder than it looks. I'm gonna tell you right now, that wall combo right there that Ukiyo is using. Oh, he burst. You know that King Ray Jr. wants to take this back, but all the plus frames into the side sword sweep. I know you want to tech roll. We got ourselves a reset. And Ukiyo gives King Ray Jr. a taste of his own medicine, a 3-0 in grand finals to match the one he got from him at winners. And that means we're all tied up, all things considered. One more set's gonna decide the difference between these two. I'm feeling pretty good about my boy Yukio right here. He seems like he knows what he's doing. Already he's up by three games in a row it, it, the adaptation is just astounding yeah it's nuts and, and we we're saying it before a lot of momentum coming from the losers final situation over rhythm three to one now you know take that 
those matches into consideration. He's six to one in the last seven sets. You gotta feel good about that. Yeah, definitely. King Ray Jr. getting huge amounts of life here. Life lead, that is. And going through the balcony. Nah, we don't want to spend that. Yeah, don't mind saving the breakable there. Indian stance Ooh. into... Bro, you cannot it's... let Yoshimitsu just spin on you like that. Playing the hop kick just a little bit to get over the dragonfly. Great stuff. That little bit of difference in timing one king ray jr the round oh running the big lows now trying to create some of this reward right here oh yukio wasn't in heat so he couldn't get the wall splat unfortunate king ray jr took advantage of that that was such a quick round yeah kind of a wonky wall situation there King Ray Jr. just taking advantage as soon as possible, and Kukio finally gets a first huge launch in this new set. Yeah, and perfect wall distance right there. I'm learning so much about combos from Yukio here. There it is. Kung Ray Jr. makes sure to block the second hit of the Heat Smash here. Goes into their power oh. crush, the Exerciser for the Heat Engager, but Ducky, uh, unfortunate. Uh, uh. Oh, got clipped by the second and third hit. That's gonna be huge damage and rage as well. It's gonna be enough though. Trying to wall carry as far as possible and it's not gonna be enough. Ukiyo stays alive in this first game. Mm, and we saw the counter hit string right there from No Sword Stance. That is another thing that you don't see very often from the Yoshimitsu community. I'm telling you, this is the one that's gonna go the distance when it comes to the mental stack for their homing at that time. Hatching, stepping. Big counter hit launcher here from the second hit of the 1-1 string in no sword stance. Yukio's gotta get themselves out of this spacing right here. Oh, they whip the keepers, but somehow keepers recover so quickly, King Ray Jr. couldn't get a whip punish on it. Oh, big damage situation again. It's really close, especially with the scaling from the wall break. Even if it doesn't kill, it's going to destroy all of the recoverable health, but I think it does. No, it does not. King Ray Jr. got to close this round uh... out. And of course, the cheeky jab low combo. All right. You know, I guess we could do it like that. I guess you could just kind of like cheese it out. You know, no big deal. There was ever a classic Asuka round end situation. That is definitely one of them. The one three. To clean it up at the very end it's not something that we see from king ray jr all that often so yeah, i don't think so it's uh definitely one of those back pocket things i i do think that when you get to this high level of tournament even a little bit before i i definitely think about this myself in ranked match when you're trying to look for that sort of round end situation the clutch moment you need to pull out the the thing that you know always works you know and uh, yeah. sometimes sometimes it's as simple as the one three all reliable yep First game goes to Kareem Gray Jr. Stops the bleeding after three straight in the grand final set on winner's side. Okay, Yukio in no sword stance right now. That means that the no sword stance flash is in play. Ah, yes, but King Ray Jr. not. Even though he baited it out, he couldn't get the launch punish on it. Yeah, it's tough. It doesn't have a lot of animation, so. Gotta be really keen to get that whiff punish. He just wasn't ready for it, but. Nonetheless, King Ray Jr. with a great round and takes the first one. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> Definitely something that we've seen a lot from the Yukio playbook right here. Oh, the tech roll sword sweep. Speaking of the Yukio playbook. <laughs> they dropped the combo just to do an Oki situation there. That was very neat. Write that down. Write that down. <laughs> Using the heat smash, keep pushing him towards the corner. King Harry Jr. felt like he had the step. Got hit by the yeah. homing. Whoa! Whoa! Pick up! Look, you. Well, and I think Yukio's gonna get good wall for this as well, and he uh, does. This guy's got it all. He's got the combo down for every situation. It was mid that time. Expecting the duck since he's done the dragonfly homing so often. 
The, the, the first pump of Meditation Ooh. Stance only gets you one health, so he's not getting a lot of that health back. However, this Indian Stance, this full crouch counter hit is doing hella work. Route sorry, sidestep one once again. How many times are we gonna see that from Ukyo? I don't know, but this time it got the counter hit. It's like doing rock four times in a row. King Ray Jr. has gotta expect it at some point. Heat smash breaks the wall. Gonna get a great combo here. Yeah, tornadoes a little bit early Yo! there. Oh, it didn't break the wall with a wall slump because that was the final hit that you get because he had broken the wall previously with the heat smash. Punish. More time. Woo! Big duck. The wall break. Uh, the wall break actually stabilizes the combo so nicely, and it's an easy cleanup for King Ray Jr. Big, huge break point here from Ukyo. Could be one one or two zero. Well, no punish on the sidestep too right there. So many years of it not being what, there we go. He tried to punish it that time. That was crazy that he didn't get a whiff punish on it even, but you know, it is what it is. Oh. This being my second game, I, I definitely feel that that legacy knowledge sometimes very hard to break. Ooh, the Kinsho backswing blow, very linear in and of itself, but King Ray Jr. caught stepping backwards. Ooh, speaking of, Catching you stepping, I caught Ukyo stepping out. He burst into a large amount of damage. Yeah. Try to get the perfect round in situation. Try to fit as many little hits as possible to carry, but it's kind of weird and let it rock at the very end. Oh, what a cop. Oh, 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 no. Didn't finish it just yet. Spirited away side switches and puts him in a really big position. Five seconds left. Oh, low. Oh, it hit! It did it hit! It whiffed just enough. And for the first time, Ukyo will take his own life for his opponents. And King Ray Jr. goes up too. You know, I would say that that one was not needed, but honestly, he didn't have a lot of time left. He needed yeah. an unblockable. It needed to be some unblockable. It can't be windmill. I'm looking at it. He had two seconds left. He could have maybe done like a couple more full crouch sweeps and maybe worked that. But even then, you're basically killing yourself no matter what. Yeah, I think he expected King Ray Jr. to stay put, and mm -hmm. we expected that King Ray Jr. is like, oh, I can just take a bunch of lows, I'll still survive. And so, hope that he would stay put there, but that was a great response. King Ray Jr. saves him the game and doubles his lead. Okay, Janet Circle. Fukio trying to keep the map advantage, but King Ray Jr. says no with the Heat Smash. Yeah, gutsy response on the plus frames there. Yeah, and that's going to be out of the air, so... It's gonna float damage, but still gonna be pretty good damage. And especially considering he's gonna get some health back and get away from that wall. Yeah, and the lower amount of health that King Ray Jr. had gave it even more damage for Ukyo. He's like, you know, I think you still might get hit by this back turn down one. They keep getting hit by it, even though King Ray Jr. does have can cans on lock. We shall see if it even ends up getting used right here. King Ray Jr. still got that first round. Second hit. Oh, spring kick punish, very nice. Spring kicking against Yoshimitsu, not even once. Yeah, I mean, you think about the variable amount of walk stun that it puts upon you because of the travel time. You know, Yoshi doesn't even bother with that. He just flashes nope. every time. Every single time, always works. Ooh, that was the weak side of the sword sweep, and it was a distance that cool. Ukyo couldn't get. Cool. And King Ray Jr. now on tournament point. Oh, and all the momentum has flipped over from game two to game three. King Ray Jr. trying to put the final nail in the coffin. King Ray Jr. goes for the big low right there. He has really nothing to lose. He's not only up two rounds, he's up two games in this reset right here. That's safe well. Yoshimitsu's who's in heat. Yukio uses the spin into the heat smash. Great option. Lives to stay another day. See, you give yourself one to give yourself two. Starts off with these little steps. 
Oh, King Ray Jr. trying to catch the timing of oh. Ukyo, but I gotta think that maybe Ukyo's uh. not gonna let it be that easy. Okay, situation. Let's just say King Ray Jr. has been really good at dealing with those wall situations, wall Oh, don't spin away from me that time. Drop the combo though. That's a huge damage loss. That's a big deal here. Ukio has the life lead using the Ooh. second hit of the meditation stance, which gave him three total health. And now King Ray Jr. has the ability to break it. Does not get the, all of it. The sword sweep kills him just like it had in the second round. And that makes King Ray Jr. a six time Tampa Never Sleeps champion and three weeks in a row.